Yeah, you can hear that? It's like, sounds like someone eyeball fell out. Oh, we're live now. What's, <laughs> it sounds like a glass eyeball rolling around. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? There's shit rolling around upstairs, and it's picking up on my mic. But uh, welcome to Overdose, a weekly series where we drink, and sometimes we don't drink, but we talk about bullshit. Let's say hello to Tim Maloney, Yellow Bus, down, Arizona style, me, yep. Surf Dub, sucking the metaphorical dick, um, Sean, Shank, sucking the actual dick, and uh, Killer Monk up in the house. Really soon. In Cali. So uh, so I, I think this is going to be a disinteresting first topic because I think we pretty much all agree about it. But um, does anyone want to intro this with the, the license plate thing? You can intro it. Okay. I, I started. I should have fucking finished the job. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, there's this article I came across that says that um, thousands of police stations and townships around the world now are using, like, camera technology to capture information um, from your license plates and compile that data so people can know your whereabouts. And uh, basically the problem now is that the information is being obtained, and at least from what we understand, illegally, and secondly, it's being used for informational purposes that we don't understand. So what do you guys think about this whole Big Brother spying on you shit? Well, I mean, it's obvious. I mean, everybody knows what's going on. They just had a problem with, um, I think it was Soldier Boy out in California a few months ago. His car was involved in a hit and run, and they were able to track it back because of all the cameras that they have out there. They were able to I've put him at that, that location in that, at that exact time. I think his car got taken away. Um, the the police took his car and were investigating it and everything because they were able to pinpoint him being there and doing it at that time. Well, isn't that sort of what's working against that one football player too? Aaron that, Hernandez? That, yeah, yeah, that they've got so much, over, despite him destroying home surveillance stuff, they've got so much overwhelming evidence supporting that he was with this guy that night yeah. and sending texts and like, I, there's like bit, mega bit information or something they were able to download still from like the phone and yeah, they, be able to figure all that shit out. They have, like, the full play-by-play -play of what he did that night. Yeah, dude, that's what it sounds like. So the article says, You are being tracked. How license plate readers are being used to record Americans' movements. Blah, blah, blah. It says, basically, the information captured by the readers, including the license plate numbers and the date, time, and location of every scan, is being collected and sometimes pooled into regional sharing systems. As a result, enormous databases of innocent motorists' location information are growing. I'm going to tell, uh, and... tell you something that the only thing that, for one, if they look at mine, they're going to be like, God, this motherfucker is boring. And for two, as long as they don't have one where I live and see all the odd <laughs> things I do, I'm fine. That's the thing. I think it, the, the majority of people are like, hey, I'm innocent, like whatever. But I think there's just enough of that mentality that it, it sort of misses the principle of like, well, fuck, man, you're obtaining shit you, sh you, don't, you don't need to have or shouldn't have. I mean, it's hard to say. It Does it help with things? Like, yeah, th is that part of why the Boston City Bombers were able to be identified? Sure. Some people are saying that's a hoax. I don't know if it is, and I'm not opinionating on that. But just in general, crime in general is much easier to track now because of these devices. The trade-off, however, is that we're all fucking being spied on. They have a satellite yeah. on Sean's house at all times. Then I'm in big trouble. So is that how you guys all feel before I move on the topic? Is it just basically like you feel like, hey, being lost in the static is fine, like whatever, or what? I mean, to me, like I said, it's just, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, with all the technology these days, the internet, the fucking cell phones, portable, I mean, how many times are you being, you know, on video, on camera a day that you don't know of? I mean, True. the fact is, if you're not doing no anything wrong, which, you know, I'm not perfect, I mean, you know, sometimes I have my oh, finger really? up. Oh, <laughs> really? Sometimes I have my finger up my ass while I'm driving, but who cares? Who doesn't? You know? I mean, it doesn't really bother me. <laughs> I, I honestly think uh, if, if you're doing something that you feel like you shouldn't be doing, you probably shouldn't be doing it anyway. And if you're that big of a criminal, you should probably figure out a way to outsmart all these things. Because if we're aware that all this is happening, you should be smart enough to know how to get out, like, out of it. Like if, if you can be placed in all these different areas, and let's say like you, you're tied to a murder, let's say, you need to find someone to commit that murder, and then you need to be somewhere else so you can find information that shows, hey, look, I was in, I was in fucking Idaho when this guy was killed in, you know, New Hampshire, and it's like, okay, well, then, then they know that you hired someone, but then they have to go after that guy. 
I don't know where to look. I was thinking about this sort of topic earlier today, and it kind of goes into the same thing. Is like I've often wondered, like, okay, if you take the idea of like a security system, for instance, if if no one broke into houses, no one would have thought to create the security system. There'd be no need for it, right? Um, my question has been this: because break-ins, by and large, don't occur by the majority of citizens, I think it's safe to say the majority of us don't think about and then actually act out robbing someone. Most of us probably don't even think about it. But for those of us who even do contemplate it, even the majority of the people contemplating it still don't actually go and do it. So if we're able to say the majority of people don't rob houses, so therefore we don't need to bother making security systems, would criminals be? have become as elaborate as they have been. And this is just one subjective example. So no. the idea here is that no matter what technology or what law or what construct you made to create safety or bring order and consciousness that make us feel safe, um, is it just a matter of time before someone else figures out how to outsmart it? And I think the answer is gen generally yes. So the solution to that, I don't know. What do you guys think? Is there a solution to that? Do you, do you continue to try and make it so that it's harder and harder for people to commit crimes and do wrong to others? Or do you just try and let, you know, the status quo of society shun those people enough on a moralistic or principle and hope that it stops? Well, isn't it usually people will commit the crime because they have no others, like, that's like their last resort? Or it's so at least they or, feel, right? Yeah. Or I guess a gang initiation or something, but... Right. I think there's, you know, there, there's, that, there's that whole aspect that makes it really super, super complicated, of course. I, I don't have a, a, a suggestion in terms of, like, a way to solve that problem, but I think it is interesting that, like, the more we try to solve it, the sort of worse we're making it, but not acknowledging it isn't a viable option either. So I often, I ponder that. I wonder, is there a way to solve the world's problems in some less ob theoretically objective way? Oh, I'm I'm really not too surprised that like the NSA would be watching our license plates though. After all the other right. shit that it's not shocking going anyone on. now. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can think of it too as a you know as much as this is uh, you know completely fucking up our civil liberties of what we're, our country's founded on. You know, the Patriot Act, all that other stuff with the cell phones and Verizon. But um, you know, yeah, it's invading our our privacy, but at the same time, like, I think what they're doing is they're trying to compile a large amount of data so that they can, they can catch someone, not, I mean, it's still a reactive process, it's still, you know, people are commit crimes, they just have a good way of catching them quicker and with more evidence, and I think that's the only reason why they're implementing this, and I don't think it's a huge issue, I'm more of I'm more pissed about the fucking speed things and how they can just take a picture and then send you a bill in the mail and say, hey, look, fuck you. Okay, I'm they, uh, they have to, legally, they have to label that at least. Yeah. Oh, they, they label it out here. Yeah, they, they, have, they have to. Yeah. Or else it's what, entrapment? Is that what it's called? It's annoying. Yeah, it's annoying. Well, it's 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 frustrating. I think we've talked about this with other stuff before, but it is like again making making rules for the exception and and not and not the rule, and it destroys sort of the essence of like there. We have this 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 atmosphere of distrust and paranoia everywhere in the world now. I mean, I think it's most prevalent probably in America, but uh, I wish that just didn't have to be a factor. Of course, it is, but uh, again, well, I don't I don't have anything meaningful to say on it. Because <laughs> you can even get tickets from those if you like don't stop to turn right or and stuff like that. Right, I like the the red light well, ones or whatever. Yeah. Here, here's my here's my dilemma. Let's not get too far into this because I'm gonna get crazy. <laughs> but, we'll change topics after you're done. Yeah. So they have a red light camera, and then they have a speed camera in the light as well. So I'm just getting off the highway. I want to like get through this light. It's an awkward situation. It goes yellow, and you're like, ah, fuck. What do I do? Do I like? Okay. First of all, I don't want to get a red light ticket, so I don't want to go through slowly. So I sped up, but then I was going too fast, and I got a fucking flash because I went over, like, the 11 miles an hour threshold. And so it's like, do I go fast and get through, or do I break, and then the guy rear-ends me? Like, what happens? Like, it's all this gay shit that goes through your mind, and it's like, I, you know, you just get off work eight-hour shift. The last thing you want to do is have to make a split decision like you're some kind of, like, hero, you know? Like, this, <laughs> this isn't life or death right here. It's like, literally, just let me get the fuck past this. Like, I'm not blowing a red light. So in Arizona, will they actually give you a ticket for taking a turn too quickly, despite it being green or yellow? Um, okay, here's the deal. Like, it's, let's, let's say it's 40 miles an hour. Um, if you go through a light, I, I believe it's either 10 or 15 mile an hour buffer. Let's say it's like 35, right? Let's say that I was going 40 or 45, and then it hits yellow at an awkward point to where it's like the point of no return. Like, I can either break really hard or go through. I decided to go through, and I sped up, and I think I hit the threshold. 
And so even though I made it through, uh, and it wasn't like I was in the you know the threshold of the red as I was in the middle of the intersection, I, I exceeded the limit, and then they flashed me even though I got through five. I see. I understand. And if I would have so, jammed on the brakes, okay. the thing is, is with uh, the data that's out there now, is when people see yellow, they're jamming their brakes and they're getting rear-ended right. more. So right. there's just as many accidents. There's just less fatal ones. But it's like, okay, well now everyone's getting a stupid ass ticket. A well, part of the discussion, I mean. too, that legislators have brought up here in Illinois is that these were supposed to be cost neutral, meaning that how, however much it took to build them would just be paid off by the eventual revenue from the tickets that it would catch that you know officers didn't have to, to make, um, but that it wouldn't be profitable. Now, the, what, what the legislation has brought up is that several municipalities have reported, the workers have reported that they are actually being hired to go into the, the system for the for intersections, on major intersections, and when they install the cameras, they're also being instructed to change the timing from the yellow to the red. So this will make it longer, right? One, yeah, or make it shorter, so oh, that yeah. so that you can't get through easily and that you get the tickets more abundantly. Um, but several guys came forward and testified against against legislators, for, you know, and municipalities again for for pushing that. Um, but the problem is, is like uh, for those of you who don't know out there, um, for our viewers, like Illinois is one of those states that, like, I can, well, nowhere economically is anyone doing super well. But Illinois is one of the states that are in pretty bad trouble. Everything's, uh, it's it's too long to even begin to go into. But it's pretty bad, California. Um, I, so I actually moved from the worst. Oh Sorry. yeah, go, uh, finish. No, I was I'll just say, saying, they're just trying to they're just trying to make to make money off of this. I just now. moved it's from like. Okay. The worst tax state to the second worst tax state. <laughs> yeah, hey man, you're moving on up, but slowly. Yeah. Oh, shit. Now all you gotta do is get kids and come to the worst uh, education system in Arizona. Yeah. <laughs> so what's our next topic, guys? What do you guys want to talk about? Um, oh, I don't really know. Why don't you know? Why don't we talk about Kanye's rant and awful bullshit that? So there was two things to talk about with him, right? One that his album plummeted, apparently. Um, which I, I think is kind of interesting because I'm I'm definitely of the mindset of like what goes around comes around and I don't think he's putting out a real integral filled energy out there and I just feel like that's eventually going to come back to bite him. But then the other thing was this thing with the camera guy, right? Yeah, I mean it was uh, you know he pretty much beat up the camera guy and they not, they were going to just <laughs> file they're going to file assault charges, but they're going after like you know robbery and stuff like that because he tried to take the guy's camera and stuff. Not like he was taking it to steal it. You know, he's just taking it to get out of his hands. And, I mean, you know, the guy's a fucking douchebag. We've learned that years and years ago. And, you know, I mean, I feel bad for his daughter. I mean, having to fucking, you know. Be subjected to that? Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's awful. I mean, I, I, I think it's sad. I mean, you know, to me, I think it's bullshit. I mean, the guy's a douchebag. You know, you know, he got in the business. He started producing. He got popular, started putting out albums, gets more popular. What do you expect, man? You're fucking in, in the record industry. What do you expect? You're able to go to a restaurant or go anywhere without cameras in your face, dude? Get out of the like, fucking get out of the business, man. I think that was like the second time that he's done that in like a month or something too. Sean Penn was another big one he beat up people, right? Yeah, or, yeah Sean Penn was kind of <laughs> the same way, you, you know, years ago. I and can then, see to be honest, I can see both sides of this argument and that like if I'm successful at doing something, I understand there's no reasonable expectation of privacy. Nonetheless, I would still be pretty infuriated with people fucking following me around all the time. I'd probably end up pulling a Johnny Depp and moving to another country just to fucking get away from some of it. So I can understand what that frustration must be like. The paparazzi are all fucking... To me, I'm sorry. If, if anyone watching, it happens to be paparazzi. Sorry I'm about to say this, but I think you're a fucking loser. I mean, preying on someone else's lifestyle or just because we should be more interested in celebrities or even this crap about, like, you know, and I know it's tradition in, 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 in England and the UK or whatever, but like the royal baby, it's like it's just another baby, just another people. There's nothing more significant about them than me or you. They're in a privileged position, and that's it. There, there's nothing that, that makes them stand out against anyone else, so why do we treat it as such? It's the same thing with celebrities. They have a talent, a, a, skill, a skill set for something, and while we should admire them, we shouldn't idolize them. And that's what my problem is with the paparazzi. So I, I'm kind of I'm kind of caught on this one. I don't know. Like, but smart, would I beat though. the fuck out of a photographer? I might. I mean, if I was being pissed off and bothered, I don't know. I, don't, I can't say how I would react if people well, wouldn't leave me alone when I asked them to leave me alone. The paparazzi are smart though, because if you look at it, in uh, the past, well, I think it was like a month or two ago, uh, this paparazzi was like blatantly harassing Scottie Pippen in Malibu, and he just he just like punched him in the face, and it's a four million dollar <laughs> lawsuit now. <laughs> 
Like, yeah. Pippen just, like, got up, and this guy was, like, harassing him. He just, like, slammed him in the face. And then, you know, there's a $4 million lawsuit. He'll probably have to settle down, pay him out, like, almost a million dollars. And it's like, would, would you want to, like, I, hell, I'd get, I'd get punched in the face by a famous person to get paid a million dollars. Hell, yeah. Well, fuck yeah, anyone's going to leverage that. I mean, and every time I see something like this appear in the news, it's all, the celebrity always loses. They always end up paying for the broken camera equipment that they destroyed or or the damages for, for beating someone up or whatever. But, uh, yeah, I feel like there, there, need, there should be more legislation actually protecting public figures from people like the paparazzi. I think it's like to have a reasonable expectation, you know, is, is one thing. Um, but to completely, like... I've seen some specials and some interviews and stuff, you know, with like, you know, celebrities that, are, and it's basically it's legalized harassment. It's pretty terrible. And I guess, like, the, I, like I said, there's that one school of thought that's like, well, hey, you should fucking expect it. Fuck you, too bad. And then there's the other point, which is like, hey, man, is it right that someone is fucking followed every single fucking place they go, and and, and, hara and basically harassed? So I don't know. I don't know how to feel on it. He's a douchebag. He should be harassed. Fuck him. I saw, <laughs> I saw some. Some meme, I don't know if it was on like Reddit or Facebook, I was like, we won the Revolutionary War, we shouldn't have to hear about this shit about the royal family, or the baby, or whatever. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, that's well, so funny. I, I yeah. mean, I, I used to like Kanye, and I mean, it started to dwindle, because each, each CD's gotten progressively worse since his uh, graduation, which I liked a lot. And, Why do you uh, think that is? What makes him worse? Well, I mean, him and Jay Z have gotten so exponentially cocky; it's like retarded. Like, if you looked at Kanye's new album, like I kind of like the first song, and then every other every other uh, song that he has uh, is by him. And then he has one, like I think his fourth or fifth track. When I was checking it out on Spotify, it was like Kanye West featuring God. Like God is featuring is is featured in his song. It's so ridiculous. And I was like, wait, what? And then, like, Jay-Z has a bunch of songs where he's like, I'm the shit, I'm the shit, you know, and we're, and we're, I'm the shit. And just, like, he has a completely different approach where he has, like, everyone featured in his films and his songs, and he, like, he makes them make the song. But Kanye See, is just like, no one's in my album except for God, and he's just, he's featured in one of my songs. Like, I didn't get it. See, that's, that's, I, I don't know if Sean, if you might agree on this, because Sean, I love his don't albums. know. Shank, Shank is like the hip-hop rap like aficionado. He knows everything that, that anyone could possibly know. But my take on it is like I feel like when rap started to devolve towards the beginning to the middle of the 90s and then eventually totally to the point where I don't listen to any artist really past 93 is because it moved away from this core message of struggle and things that were going on in society and highlighting real social struggles that were meaningful to bitches, rims, 22s, I'm awesome, ego, ego, ego. Like what... You know, Tim just outlined. So that's my problem. Why is there so much? You have to ask yourself, what's wrong with someone when so much ego dictates the content of their work? You know, because almost all of rap can be said now. Almost everyone at some point or another who's a rap artist has claimed to be number one, which is really funny that all these guys are trying to click <laughs> this title. But, yeah, I don't know. What do you think about that, Shank? I mean, do you think that it's devolved because of the ego or what? Well, I don't think that's do with ego. If you're good, you're good. Jay-Z was at the top of his game. He, is he any more? I mean, uh, his raps, his his sales say. I mean, he he sold 1.2 million to Samsung alone just so they can give it away to their uh, subscribers. But when when they went away from the struggles and everything in the ghetto and everything that made rap music what it was back in the late 80s, early 90s, and started worrying about fucking radio play, that's when they lost everything. When you get people like Lil Wayne who just stumble and stutter over his words and don't make sense. And, you know, you got someone who sound like they have piles of shit in their mouth and all they talk about, like you said, they talk about cars, they talk about hoes, they talk about houses. You know, who? so you got all this shit now? That is nothing what they were talking about in the 80s when they're, you know, they're talking about the struggles they had to get it and, you know, how like Easy e sold drugs to start his record label. And, you know, nothing street anymore. It's all crossover pop bullshit that they can play on the radio, and that's all anyone cares about, and it's all that sells, and it's all the same bullshit. Well, that's right, because all of the, the younger, more naive generation is going to buy it because the image is cool, and they think that it's worthy of their time. But if it wasn't for that sect of the population, there would be no record sales. And I think that that's, that's the mistake that is constantly made in terms of the record companies is because they're not, that not for a long time have companies looked at integrity for whatever business endeavor it is but especially in music it's about what sells and if tomorrow like 
you know, fucking sticking popsicles up your ass and lighting firecrackers out of the tip of your dick, it, it sells records. That's guess what? That's what everyone's doing tomorrow. So, it KRS One talks about it all the time. You know that constantly yeah. DJs think that they're dope because they've got record sales. But it doesn't mean you have substance. It doesn't mean you have any fucking musical integrity or anything meaningful to say. Right. Kind of I mean, that's that. the thing oh. is, you know, KRS One's still around. He still he doesn't sell. Because and even does, in his heyday, he didn't sell really well. No, I mean when he was a boogie down production, he released his first couple albums. You know, back in the days when you know hip hop was big, he sold. Now nobody wants to listen to him because he's not fucking doing the pop music. He's not talking about his fucking gold chain and his sixteen hoes. Karis One is still to the roots he was fucking twenty five years ago, and that's the problem is that America these days and the fucking kids have the attention span of fucking dead squirrels. And they can't. That's what I was say. Yeah, they don't. They don't have an attention span. All you need to do is have a fucking catchy beat where a little bastard can bob his head. Well, and don't listen. Don't listen to the fucking lyrics. You know, yeah, they'll sing it. They don't know what it means. It doesn't mean shit to them. <laughs> Dead squirrels don't have an attention span. Exactly. Gonna, That's my point. That I was gonna bring that up to where, you know, back in the day, you know, uh, you know, for example, the only thing I can think of right now is, you know, Jay Z like H to the Izzo, you know, like he sang songs like that, Big Pimpin', like. They were just like they loved that shit, and we, you know, we as a listener listened to whatever they said, and we were like, "Wow, that guy's awesome," or "That guy's the shit." And now it's like a guy you've never even heard of has like a one-hit wonder, and he's like, "I got, I got all these cars, I got this gold chain, I'm the shit, I got a gold chain that's ten thousand dollars worth your house, like fuck you, I'm awesome." It's like you just broke a deal. How the fuck did you just like take that hundred thousand dollars and like throw it at a music video and say like you're awesome and like. Then you're like, people that are listening, it's like, oh man, he says he's awesome. I believe him. I got yeah, exactly. Problems and a bitch ain't one. He's a it's, all, it, it's all fun and games so the record company recoups everything you fucking spent, and then you owe them money, and you you and sell ten million, million copies, and you end up getting six dollars and twelve cents. Well, that's why I, I talked about in, in my partnership videos. Like people get so eager to sign bullshit contracts that that's exactly what happened. Record labels own them and whatever. But I I don't understand too why success is purported to this idea of money. I mean. Yeah, because social conditioning and society just rewards at large people who have large sums of money. But, you know, it's funny. The, the, the research is clear. People who have more material wealth often report higher rates of depression. And it's because they've spent their whole lives thinking that the almighty dollar is the way to be successful. They attain it, and then they wonder why they still feel empty. Well, because you're not good at building relationships. You're not good at enjoying yourself. You're not good at, at living a stress-free life. You're not good at creating your own purpose outside of the work environment, you know? I'm I'm not the type of person that's ever needed the structure of a job or a career to know who I am. Some people need that. But it's sad how many people you see get to the end of the rainbow chasing the almighty dollar, have worked their whole lives for a pension or whatever, or made themselves miserable, only to find out that it doesn't matter. Traditional success means nothing. The tangible success is those people that are fucking happy no matter what. Yeah. And if you cultivate that attitude, you're ultimately going to have a richer life because of it. But it's so over the top of the youth, it's so over the top of some ignorant rapper that you you can't even you can't even begin to penetrate that bureaucratic bullshit. But you don't need to. You don't like I said. It's all right, about a it. catchy. You can have a catchy line or a catchy beat. As long as they play it on the fucking radio these days, anyone who doesn't get radio airplay, you may sell thirty or forty thousand copies. And if you're on a fucking major label, they're gonna fucking dump your ass. Right. And then what do you do? You end up on fucking welfare and food stamps, and you end up fucking selling drugs. Tosh.0. Well, we're on the exactly. topic of artists, since I actually listen to the radio since I have to drive to work now, Justin <laughs> Justin Bieber, like, peed in an that. alleyway or something. One of his friends recorded it? Yeah. Or something? And that was... Yeah, he, he, him on it, he peed in public and got in trouble, yeah. And apparently he pulled up with his tour bus to, like, a club and picked out, hand-picked girls to come into the, the tour van, because he can't get into a club yet. <laughs> really? No shit. I heard, I heard a while back that some club turned him away. Or kicked him out or something, but uh, so wait, what what happened with him peeing on the wall? Did he, just, he did he got in trouble for it or what? It, like one of his friends like recorded it and they were all like egging him on and like you can find the video and it's just like speaking of cocky motherfucker, <laughs> Justin Bieber. Yeah, he's, so a little, he's, a, he's a little he's a little fucking arrogant prick, man. You know, he was out here a few weeks ago and got was in one of uh, the clubs in Chicago because I think a friend of his, a DJ, was DJing that night and. There was a lot of things. I think the club got fined. They they claimed they didn't serve him alcohol, but he you know they claimed he was just in a club supporting his friend. And he was never served alcohol, but I think they still got fined when he was out in Chicagoland a few weeks ago. No shit. Bullshit. 
Yeah, Who of course. Who doesn't go to a club and not have alcohol? Exactly. I think, too, he has, um, like, these outstanding charges from, like, a monkey bill in Europe. He had, like, a monkey yeah. hand with it just decided to ditch it or something. And so there's, like, hotels and all these establishments where, like, there's monkey shit on the floor and you didn't take care of this and, like, quarantines and, like, you know, when you when you um, transport an animal across boundaries and shit, there's, there's all kinds of international law that you have to follow to make sure that they're not that have rabies and vaccines, and I think he was just like, fuck it, I'm not going to deal with it anymore. And now he's got all kinds of fines he's got to deal with. Uh, that kid, uh... He's a little bitch, but he's, you know, he's loaded. The girls love him. Ooh, Justin! <laughs> Seriously. He's voted best abs. Yeah. My whole thing is, you don't, uh, not that judgment is ever right, which is what we're doing, but you invite judgment when you don't you don't just do your thing, man, and have some fucking integrity. Have some substance, yeah, for Christ's sakes. If, if Justin Bieber was just doing his thing, I'd be like, hey, man, haters are going to hate. you got to do your thing. you got to do you. But he's he proves time and time again that he's not a person of substance, so why should it be treated as yeah, such? In, in public, like, just he thinks he's better than everyone else. He wants right. – I mean, all he's doing – I mean, if, he, if he's doing it for attention, he's getting it because he's in the news every day about something. Yeah. It's like Miley Cyrus. I think that's one of our topics, too, is she went off the fucking deep end. What happened there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that song that Did she you guys see that off. video? Dude, no, I had to, No, I haven't seen it. What's that all about? Okay. I, I, I watched, watched it without sound. I, I, I watched probably the video better that way. when, when yeah. uh, my buddies were visiting. <laughs> you know, the two guys came and visited me in Arizona. They're like, you have to see the new Miley Cyrus video. And I was like, what the fuck? And they're like, no, no, there's a funny part in it. And so I, I watched the whole video, and I'm just like, wow, she's completely unhinged. And then, like, they showed me this one part in the video where, like, they're all... Pretty much the video is just her, like, unhinging, like, gets a different haircut. She acts like a slut. She's just dancing. She's getting drunk. I think she's taking pills. Excellent. And then she's, like, she's like wrestling another girl that she knows in the video. And this guy just starts, like, you know, skanking where, you know, used to ska and shit like that. Yeah, yeah. This guy looks like he's, like, skanking, and he's, like, kind of just flailing his arms and his legs. And he just, like, it looks like he just stomps her head in when she's wrestling this girl on the ground. And, like, we slowed it <laughs> down. And, like, this, they, they're doing this song, and she's, you know, the music's going over the song, kind of like how, you know, you record it and you do the video over it. And you just see this guy just, like, casually stomp her face in. And I'm like, laughing hysterically. Stomp? Yeah, like a curb stomp. I, I kind of, like, sit back afterwards, and I'm just like, that used to be Hannah Montana. And, like, you know, Britney unhinged, but she unhinged because of, like, the paparazzi. And, like, you know, she came her coming-of-age thing was, uh, I'm a slave for you. And I was like, that's a little risque, but this is just, like, complete and utter garbage. Yeah, but you know what there is? It's all those, those Disney kids who get to an age that you want to shed that Disney light and become uh, more adult. Like, what's that one? That one that dated Justin Bieber is dating Selena Gomez. Uh, yeah. I just read an article about her the other day that well, she was in supposedly, she was in a spring break movie, which she didn't do anything, but uh, there was an article, I guess, attached to it where it <laughs> talked about how she's down that she'll do nude scenes. Who, wait, who is this? She just Selena, turned 21 uh, yeah. the, yesterday. Yesterday, yes. Pat, 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 Pat. Selena, Selena Gomez. Good old radio informing me of my pop culture. <laughs> I've never, I've never really been attracted to her, but I mean, I'll, I'll look at her titties. I mean, why not? Yeah, seriously, 21 years old, I'll look too. Everyone said about the Olsen twins when everyone was like waiting for the Olsen twins to come of age, and then it turned Dude. out to be anorexic crackheads. Dude, exactly. and you know what they did? Uh, I swear to God, I read that they had a threesome with the dad. Oh, you with know, Danny Tanner? Yeah, like the, the dad on, <laughs> Bob the, dad Saget? on the show. See, the Bob thing is, yeah, Bob Sag I just remember it was Bob Saget, but the dad on the show... AKA like an entourage, like the guy that like had a oh big God, house and like was doing like awesome. blow off chicks and shit. I was like, dude, this guy's changed. I like looked into it. I think he like at least hooked up with both of them at the same time. I think he might have fucked them both. Huh. But, that must have been interesting. I mean, YOLO. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of exactly. actresses, um, who is it that just got a show with Oprah? Uh, the crack oh, one Lindsay, that went to jail, Lindsay, Lindsay, Lohan. Lindsay Lohan. Yeah. Wait, what? She, she, two, she, she just two, got two million dollars. Si she signed a season of like, I think it's just like a biography, basically, of her drug ad addiction and like going to jail and everything. Does Oprah like Morgan Freeman just explain and narrate the whole thing? Or <laughs> the, on the radio, they were talking about like, what the fuck? What? How is she getting paid that much? Like, what the hell, what the hell is wrong with Oprah for paying her so much? Is it just on Oprah's network, or is Oprah going to actually star in the documentary? Uh, I don't know. I, I, I know Oprah's I, paying for it. It's such a bizarre it. combo. I don't know if it's going to be, like, rehabilitated back to stable mental health by Oprah. It's just Oprah every day, like, speaking wisdom over her, <laughs> you know? Here's Lindsay, a fucked-up red-headed whore. 
You know what? I got to give her credit Crack though because. It. Um, I read this article and I was comparing her to Miley Cyrus because Miley Cyrus is going downhill now. But it, it pointed out some of the good things that she's done since some of her meltdowns, and it seems like she's been making a real viable effort at turning things around in her life, from what I can see on the outside. So I can appreciate that if she's trying to grow and trying to learn from her mistakes. That's awesome. Like no well, one speaking, should tell her speaking of that teen, she can't do teens that. Having teen stars having a meltdown. Did you guys hear about Amanda uh, Bynes? Amanda Bynes. Yes! Jesus Christ! <laughs> she sucks and she's fucking crazy. She's she been off the fucking, walls for a while. Fifty-one. They fifty-one fiftied her because she fucking lit. A fire in like a neighbor of her parents' driveway. And they called the cops. So they, she's in, she's fifty one fifty right now, which if That's you don't crazy. know is fucking like crazy. She's in like a mental ward because I love that shit. She's fucking. Yeah. I heard that she was like in a manic state. Okay, so I I have a story to share about the manic state, <laughs> um, and I'm not gonna name names, but there there was once a woman who worked for my wife and I, and for our viewers who don't know, my, I know I've said this a million times, oh, so I know, I bear with that. me, but my, my wife and I own a dance and music studio. I teach music and she teaches dance, if that's not clear. <laughs> um, so anyways, she was she was one of our students, but eventually became an assistant and someone we were trying to groom into being like, you know, a teacher that had more responsibilities and maybe even had keys to the store and that sort of thing. And... <laughs> All of a sudden, like literally the day before the show and then the day of the show, she slipped into like this manic state. I didn't know that this sort of thing existed, but like basically a, a, a flip switch in her head and it was like totally like the Amanda Bynes thing. Charlie, quit whining. I don't know. If, <laughs> sorry, Charlie. Like, that was me. I'm sorry, that was me. But she like, she fucking, she flipped a switch and it was crazy. She was acting bizarre. She was like, Oprah, Oprah's in my closet. And she's like freaking out and all this shit. And then like on, on stage, like she just she just stops doing dances. She's making up her own moves. We had to actually pull her out of the show and send and send her home because she was fucking ruining the show. It was such a bizarre experience, dude. It's it's really weird because you're like, dude, I was just talking to you yesterday and you were fine. Did and she like take today acid or something? No, it's just I get she we knew she had been sort of battling depression and some other obstacles in her life. She didn't get along with her parents and stuff like that. And I identified with all that stuff. So, you know, we gave her a lot of leeway and we tried to basically just kind of take her under our wing. But for the most part, she was a pretty straightforward kind of girl. She looked like she wanted to improve her life and whatever. So there was no real signs that she was crazy. I mean, I hate to say it that way, but it just turned out like but once that, that, that flip switched, I mean, she was genuinely, she was not the same person. It was like sort of like, you know, if you had your dog today and he got fucking rabies and tomorrow he tried to kill you, you'd be like, what the fuck? Like you were just chilling a, a minute ago. It's like just a really bizarre contrast. I like it. Yeah. So that's my that's my manic story. I'm sorry it was unimpressive. <laughs> no, it, was, it was very impressive. I mean, I was just... I just want names, of... man. I want names. I yeah, you're want crazy names. about names. I don't I like names. I can tell you in the chat. Well, that's why I asked you a question in the chat. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Did I have sex or... <laughs> that was the question. Sorry, I didn't mean to just publicize it, but uh, I thought that was too funny to pass up. The question well, I, I, is, did I have sex with her? I, I saw it there, and I was like, what the fuck is he talking about? I'm like, I wonder if he's talking about the chick that fucking Surf is talking about right now. Uh, I don't oh, think it's the same topic. person. But, but yeah, let's, yeah, let's move on. Let's move on. Uh, <laughs> I don't oh, know yeah, what the next topic it's... is. We could talk about uh, bathroom etiquette. Yeah, yeah I like that. I, I like that. Why don't you, why don't you start off? Oh yeah, about yeah. Because at the the client site right now, they have like they have three bathrooms, but the main bathroom only has two stalls in it. So I have to walk in and out of there like five times during the day because I need to use the washroom. And fucking, they're always taken. I get so pissed. So I'm like, I just start thinking about like bathroom etiquette. Like, if I just walk in there, do I wash my hands or try and go to the bathroom or just walk out? I feel like I need to do something if I walk in the bathroom. I think you just say, oh, man, it burns. I think that's what I do. Dude, I remember when you used to do that all the time. Oh, dude, there's a bunch of fucking comments. I didn't even know this. Yeah, like, so, I mean, you got the the rules that everyone should know is the one urinal between you and another guy if it's open. Um, I always walk to the end. Uh, <laughs> I'll go to the opposite end of the fucking well, let room. Me, let let me bring something to you. What happens when you're at Wrigley Field and there's no stalls? It's just a big oh, fucking trough. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> That's yeah. fucking trough. I That's always fucking... go for the stall if they have it because, like... Dude, I just wet myself. I don't even care. <laughs> Dude, I, I hate it, but, like, I go through inter intermittent spurts of being pee shy, so sometimes if there's a lot of pressure for me to pee right now, I can't fucking do it, you know? I, I don't know why, but I just feel like, uh, hey, you got to perform now! You know, you you have your ten seconds to the stall. Get the fuck out. There's 300 people waiting. So I hate that aspect of like I will go out of my way to find an obscure bathroom at a stadium if I can 
the secret bathroom that nobody uses. Yeah, exactly. The best one. It's I don't know why I'm like that though. I'm totally the type of guy where I have never had a problem. Like I'll whip my dick out. Like it, it like there, there's no part of me being shy <laughs> with myself. You know what I mean? I've gone streaking of them weird shit. Like I that none of that bothers me. I don't know why I'm pee shy. I just feel like I can't let the piss down when there's expectations <laughs> of, of me pissing. Is that weird? Well, see, Practice you know, your breathing my exercise. Problem, my problem is, you know, after I unzip and it hits the cold water, it's like it's kind of embarrassing, you know. Well, because what little there is to work with is suddenly gone altogether, <laughs> well, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I kind of felt, I mean, you brought that up, and it's funny because, like, uh, a meeting, uh, about a week and a half ago, we had a meeting at my store, and I was in the bathroom. You know, I, w I went to the bathroom, I was washing my hands, and my boss walks in, and I started a conversation with him while he was in the urinal pissing. And I'm th after, as I started the conversation, I'm like, why the fuck am I talking to this guy while he's pissing? Because if someone was talking to me when I was pissing, I'd be fucking livid. I love talking <laughs> to people at the urinal next to you. So we have one urinal in the bathroom by, at my store. So it was like I had my back to him washing my hands, and he was behind me pissing, and I just started a random conversation about something. I think I it's more it's awkward fun. if you're taking a dump next to someone and start a conversation. <laughs> you know, I feel like if you're, you're taking a dump in the same room, you either have to just full-on own it that you're shitting, or you yeah. have to find discreet ways to continue pooping, which isn't always possible. <laughs> I'm just trying to own it. I had yeah, corn exactly. yesterday. I stopped giving I stopped giving a shit at some point and I don't remember when but no pun intended. I'm really polite for the most part unless I just want to like fuck with people. Dude, I remember in high school the one of the funniest things that you would do, Tim would just we'd be in a bathroom with a bunch of dudes we didn't know. Tim would put both of his hands up on the wall while he was peeing and put his head down and he'd be like ah, Oh, it burns. Oh, it burns and he'd be so I still do that. convincing about it. It would make me laugh so hard. I'd be like, "Oh, man, bars now." You know, there's always, like, a guy in the bar that, like, has, like, the, the hand towel. I'm always like, yeah. oh, my God, why does it feel this way? <laughs> and then I go and I, like, wash my hands, and the guy, like, kind of, like, hesitant when he hands me the towel. He's like, oh, am I going to get so it? Funny. Like, am I oh, going to get it? Thank you so much. Uh, One time I remember, so much my hands are burning now. Yeah. I was visiting Love a buddy it. in college, and we were at the bar, and, like, he said he was peeing, and the guy next to him turned to him and went, you call that a dick? And, like, walked away. <laughs> You wouldn't believe how many times I hear that on a daily basis. Uh, that's just so funny. It's like, oh my god! Why are you looking at my dick? God, we're <laughs> peeing in there. What are y'all looking at my dick for? <laughs> well, apparently he's not using the fucking etiquette, man. If he's fucking ju jumping in the stall next to you, and you know what I hate? I hate like you ever go to a mall and you know you go into the mall bathroom and there's you know maybe ten urinals and then you're fucking pissing and some bastard comes right next to you. It's like yeah, yeah just, there's fucking ten other ones open. Yeah, it's like what the fuck is wrong with you? That's then like I'm an fucking, unspoken rule. Like, like, dude, you're not going to look over here. That's funny, dude. It's an unspoken rule. You never go next to someone. Exactly. It's sort of like that at theaters and stuff, too. If there's, like, if there's space, if there's, like, an empty theater and the dude, like, picked the one so seat next to me, I'd be like, what the fuck? <laughs> you should you just put your arm around him. So, hey. <laughs> this is how this works. Just, I, I like <laughs> to stick my tongue in the in the ear of the people I'm sitting next to in case you didn't know. You, you want some popcorn? <laughs> <laughs> just to set the expectation. Cut the hole out. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so who's excited about the new South Park game, dude? I, I, I'm, I'm getting way stoked for it. Uh, I'm being very cautious about it because I've I've been waiting since March, and they pushed it back to May, and then they pushed it back to TBD. Well, you know why you know why it got pushed back, right? Because I know the whole story, and I don't I don't I don't care. It's really annoying. I want to play it. <laughs> it looks, it looks I don't like care if mean, THQ went under and it's a new company bottom. I want to fucking play. It. I don't care if there's a lawsuit. I want to play that shit. I agree, man. And what what about the people that like I was hesitant to pre-order it? I like. What if you pre-ordered it and now it's just like lingering, like <laughs> just uh, like in this like limbo of pre-order? I was just so depressed because I that was like the last one I was looking forward to before the new Xbox. And I feel like it won't come out until the new Xbox. Right, and then they'll probably I'm sure they'll release a version ported to the new Xbox because it's not like the animation is is stellar. I do remember reading that they said one one of the big things that Trey and Matt made very clear when they were approached about making this game is that. They didn't want to do the game unless they could make the animation in-game seem just like the stop motion that they do on the show. And they said, in the reviews I've read, they've said that if you didn't know someone had a controller, you, very often you would probably just think it was the show by the way that it's designed and they interact and shit. 
And not to inter- not to I went on a kind of a, an aggressive rant there, Shane. Cause you and I, <laughs> I know you you had that article about it, and I didn't I didn't really look too much in the article. I didn't see anything at E3, and I was trying to look for stuff at E3, but I couldn't really find anything specific to, uh, you know, the 800 pages, and they're trying to. I don't know how much are they cut how much are they going to cut out. I don't think I don't know what they're going to really cut out. I mean, I think the big delay has been it went from from THQ to the new developer, and then there was an issue. With I think the guys, I think Trey and Matt, I think there was some kind of issue. Because I read back when you know they were selling it, and it was it's like a long, long, long story that I really don't remember to be honest with you because I have an awful memory. But I mean, yeah, the game's gonna come out. And it looks it does. It looks pretty fucking awesome. Let Let me just clarify for our viewers who don't know this sort of thing. When anything changes hands from someone, you know, ownership from this to that or whatever. Even if all your ducks are in a row, the legal process is excruciating. The, the only reason I say this is, is because I have firsthand experience with opening my business with, with my wife, and the, um, the amount of time and paperwork it, it, it takes to get even one thing done, despite big companies like this having being lawyered up to the fucking to the throat, um, to the hilt, I couldn't think of the word, despite them having a whole team of people designed for that, that's probably what, I can almost guarantee you, that's what's taken it so long to get fucking, to get going again. You're probably right. But yeah, I'm excited to play it when it does come out. I'm bummed to hear that they cut some shit out, but who knows? Maybe they, there's speculation that it might be released onto the actual show as content, or it might be DLC. I think DLC is probably the more accurate, um, you know, theory. That's probably what's going to happen. Well, just need well, a good game. I mean, how long has it been since there's been a good South Park game? I remember when South Park first came out; they were the fucking releasing Power games Defense like. Was really badass. What's that? The tower defense uh, arcade yep. was really really fun. Me and Tom uh, played all the way through that like three or four times. You know, I turned Tom onto that because I downloaded it as a free trial, but I never f- like finished it. And then I think Tom went home and got it. And he told me it was awesome, and I never went past the free trial because I'm not very good at tower defense games. They frustrate me. Oh, I love them. Um, I can play them for hours. Really, it's a tower defense game, but you're also characters. So when there's two players playing, it's cool because you guys can each choose between two characters while building towers. So it's. A, I think a I would like aspect. that dynamic better because that was one of the reasons I had I never really pursued getting better at StarCraft. This is way before StarCraft 2 was ever even around when it was just the original one. And uh, the reason I always got frustrated by, by trying to build my skill set with StarCraft is it was all about the deadline. You need to... You need to be able to get all of your shit done as quickly as fucking possible in order to be successful to thwart off an attack. And that's how it is with tower defense. If I can't get all of my ducks in a row, so to speak, quickly enough, I get demolished. And then my whole thing is once I've done something elaborately once, I don't fucking feel like replaying it. So one of my issues with games like Mass Effect that you have to manually save, I love that I can manually save anywhere, but it also sucks that there is no autosave for the most part. Sometimes they give you a checkpoint, but... You'll put in an hour on a mission, forget to save, get killed, and be like, "I'm not fucking do that again. I'm not going to." How far are you on the week. trilogy? I'm like near the end of the first one. I mean, oh, okay. The the thing is, and I've and I mentioned this to viewers before too, is I get literally probably like two hours a week to play video games. It depends. I think some some viewers who have uh, added me as a friend on on Xbox see that my gamer tags on a lot, but my wife and I use it for Netflix or whatever else. So like 90% of the time that you see surfed up online, it's really just my wife. Um, so I don't get a ton of play time, and that's what's taking me so long to move through the fucking series. But anyways, that's my point, yeah. though. If I spend a, a good portion of time working through a level or working through whatever, and then I fail and I have to do it again, I'm like, fuck this, I can't touch the game for a few days or sometimes a week, you know, because I'm so fresh. I don't want to fucking do it again. I get bored. I'm in the Gold League in StarCraft, and I haven't played a game because I'm like, I will get destroyed. <laughs> yeah, I'm I've StarCraft two. my brother. Yeah, StarCraft yeah, 2. I mean, I would play, and I'd, I'd get, like... Pretty decent, but unless you play like religiously, like you just you can get fucking raped with this new system. Like, I'll get thrown in a diamond, and then I'll play every diamond game, and like just it's just like fifty percent. Like I'll win, lose, win, lose, win, lose, win, lose. The lure of being the best at something has never really spurred me on. I would say it would be a lie if I said if it didn't spur me on for anything. With drums for a long time, that was my motivation was to be the best drummer in the world. But I was foolish in at nine. Um, now though, like. Not saying that it's foolish to have ambitions to be in a gold league or whatever, but for me personally, it doesn't do anything for me to have this, to me, arbitrary title about my skill level. Especially when, like, games like Call of Duty, he, so much of it is happenstance that even the really skilled players get fucked over all the time, so how can you really say, like, the gold division is all gold players? I mean, pretty clearly there's a difference in skill level, but 
once you get down, once you get to a certain level, you know, player versus player, it's almost indistinguishable. It's like when you see on these like, awesome. like these big contestant shows, like Idol or So You Think You Can Dance. It's like once you get down to even just maybe if you've got a pool of a hundred people that have made it onto the show, you can see some differences <laughs> and holes in talent. But once you get down to like that top twenty, it's almost so indistinguishable. It really is just subjective taste at that point, you know. What's this? I just want you guys to take a look at uh, what most Xboxes are now used for primarily. Yeah, Netflix. Yeah, I still I, think that the I funny like part is, like I was saying years. last, the funny part is last week though, is PlayStation Three is the most popular device used for Netflix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I read that. And dude, now that uh, for viewers who don't know, I, I might have mentioned it in the last show, but Sean Shank got not didn't get me a PS3. He gave me his old PS3, and I started using it in my room with Netflix, and it is so much better than the Xbox. If you don't have a PS3, I, I can't really explain it. Their navigation style is just so much better, and I can totally see why more people watch Netflix on their PS3s than on their Xboxes. Yeah, and I have, I mean, I have both in the living room. I have a PlayStation 3 in my bedroom, and uh, I know I've just always been more apt to the PlayStation 3, and I mean, you know, Xbox had the exclusive for a while, and when PlayStation 3 first got Netflix, they had the stupid fucking disc. You had to put a disc in every goddamn time, so it was kind of a pain in the ass. But when they end up putting it on the dashboard, and you could just load it up, I don't know, it's just it's so much easier to fucking navigate. It just makes everything so much easier. And then when you get in, I mean, everything is just set up a lot nicer. Fuck yeah, man. It all just makes more sense the way it's done. Yep. So I wonder when they're going to get The Walking Dead on Netflix um, the, ne the, the next season, because they, they've been missing season three. I mean, it's no surprise Netflix is no, taking They'll time, release but. it about... Like it's usually two weeks before the next one. Oh really? I didn't know that they had like a. Uh, well, that's usually when they confirm a contract. Huh. Yeah. So it, it'll probably be out in a few. You know, because what's the new one? New one's premiering October. October fourteenth or fifteenth or something like that, right? If I'm not mistaken, because they just. I don't know. I don't have cable anymore, so I gotta figure out a way to see that shit. You're SOL, man. Well, you can watch on Hulu the next day, right? Or no? Um, for certain shows, it's mostly like the NBC, ABC, uh, CBS. All that stuff. Um, most Comedy Central. Um, unfortunately, AMC really isn't. I don't think they even are. None of their shows are on there. Well, you could always buy it on friggin' iTunes the next day or friggin' some Amazon. No, I, yeah, I could probably I did, buy it on Xbox too. Yeah. Jamie and I did that for season three because we had missed like the first ten episodes or whatever, and they weren't on demand anymore. Um, so we ended up just purchasing them on I think Amazon. Or, it went just been an app on the Xbox, like uh, uh, Voodoo Movies or whatever, something like that. And it wasn't bad. It was two, two or three bucks an episode, I think. So whatever. Well, I mean. another thing too is I can. I mean, this is a good reason for me just to go over to a friend's house on a Sunday night and hang out. True. True. But I do like the Talking Dead, so it's kind of like depressing. I can't see that anymore. Yeah, you know what? I well, think I want to. Is it on wanna... Tuesday nights? Um, no. it used to be back to back. So you want, would watch a one hour Walking Dead, then right, uh, and then the a half hour dead. to a one hour Talking Dead. Now, I don't want to be at a friend's house for two hours on a Sunday night. Oh, I hear you. What were you going to say, Shank? I don't remember. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, dude. It's okay, dude. It happens. I, you know how it is. I thought that, um, see, because one of my dilemmas when we first started Overdose was the fact that it interfered with the Talking Dead because Walking Dead was on Tuesday nights, right? Is it still going to be Tuesday nights or is it going to be Sunday nights now, you said? The Talking Dead, to me, was always it was always on Sunday, whether it be no. right after the show. Surf. When we originally were going to do the show, we were going to do it on Sunday at 9 o'clock right after The Walking Dead. Oh, so I have my days confused. Okay, yeah. so it's always been Sunday. Okay. Yeah, it's always been yeah. Sunday. And we decided to do the show on Tuesday because I think you guys were talking about how you liked The, the Talking Dead. And I wasn't a big fan, so it didn't matter to me. But I'd like to get watching because the ones that, you know, when I, I have watched a couple of them, I guess, what is that? Is that Chris Hardick that does it afterwards? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I was a huge fan of his, but by watching a couple of them, uh, bits and pieces, I thought it was really good and I thought it was well done. Yeah, he's grown on me a little bit. I've always been a little bit more neutral towards him in general. But, uh, but yeah, so let, let's ask our viewers to leave a comment, let us know, because once Walking Dead starts up again, we might be discussing it at length on the show. If that's something you guys aren't interested in because not a lot of you are watching it, we can avoid that, or we can at least put it later in the show, and that way you can know that you can skip around it after it airs or whatever. But I think that if we do do it, we won't do it up front in the first chunk of the show. Um, we'll do it later so you guys can at least enjoy a portion of it. So I know, because I, I, at least for me, I wouldn't want to watch a bunch of guys talking about a fucking show that I'm not watching. So do you guys, are, are you guys all interested in talking about talking The Walking Dead each Fuck week? yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think that was originally was going to be our our idea for the podcast, and I think we only 
came on during the last episode. We've only talked about it that one time. Uh, right, so, I mean, right. Since, I, I, I do have a thing. Since we are talking about The Walking Dead a little bit, and I know, uh, Yellowbus, you were talking about some new comics that came out. No, uh, the, the new comics are ongoing, but um, I was talking to, you know, a few people, and uh, I, I looked on Amazon. I was just looking through Amazon to see about the new comic for that and uh, the new comic for Jericho that's coming out, which is also a show that I like that turned into a comic. Um, but the the side books, the first, you know, that's a trilogy about the governor, it's spe- specific around the governor, and um, it's not too relevant to the TV series, but if you guys can't get up for The Walking Dead, it's a good read. Um, the trilogy, the, the last uh, novel in the series, is coming October 8th, and so I'm really excited for that because I can at least read that, close that out before the new season. And they even hinted in the description of Amazon, and I don't know if it's accurate, uh, they might bring some characters and intertwine them in, so I'm not too sure what is going to come of it, but it's called, um, you know, Woodbury, uh, Fall of the Governor or something, so you know that he's he's probably either going to fall off the horse, which uh, happened in the end of Season 3, or he might actually die. So I don't really know. I'm really excited for October. It's my birthday. we got the book coming out, and we got the new season coming. That's gonna be rad, dude. I'm I'm totally looking forward to it. I, I I haven't really missed the show per se. At first, when it first ended, I was like, "Fuck!" Like I gotta wait. But now I've gotten in that in that mode of like just not thinking about it. So it hasn't it hasn't been a huge thing for me. But I am super looking forward to it, dude. Yeah, no, it's cool. I mean, like right now it's summertime, so you know, you. I mean, I know you surf. You spend a lot of time with surf sun. You know, going out enjoying the summertime, and you know. Really, you don't have time for the the TV. Like right now is the last season of Dexter. I've been watching that on Sunday, and it was funny. I mean, if you, if you go to Netflix right now, Dexter's not on Netflix. But I, I just read the other day that if you change your Xbox profile to England, you don't get The Walking Dead on Netflix, but you'll get the seasons of Dexter. What? Oh, uh, I, I, it's got to have something to do with the licensing agreements. Yep, like it's fucking weird. I mean, I thought it was cool because if I want to watch Dexter, I'll just fucking change my profile on my Xbox and fucking watch. The because that season would was it I think season three with John Lithgow was probably one of the best. Oh, that was good. That was a good yeah, season. That was a fucking awesome season. So he actually he outplayed uh, Dexter, I think. Yep. We we complain about Netflix a lot on the show, so I never expect a sponsorship from them. But let's complain some more because they're getting rid of a bunch of other titles, aren't they? They they are. I mean, I caught that article. I mean, Netflix again posted huge profits and huge money because you know. Everybody thinks like us. We, you know, yeah, we bitch about Netflix, but every single one of us here has Netflix, correct? Right, right. I mean, you know, the eight bucks a month. Who cares about eight bucks a month, dude? I shit out more than eight bucks a week in shit. What do I care about eight? What bucks are you a, a rapper month? now? You a rapper now? I'm a rapper, man. You want to <laughs> see? Fucking piss on that shit. My fucking and fucking shit. grill. Eight dollars ain't nothing, motherfucker. Eight dollars ain't shit, man. I shit out a Big Mac that's twenty five dollars. That's a big ass Mac. Oh, it's Dollar a fucking it's a logo. smack Mac, bitches. But yeah, anyway, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt your rant. No, it's okay. Um, so yeah, they're going to be cutting out a bunch of a bunch more movies. And so that's what because they... basically, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. It's just letting them. You know, they they let the stuff go away. Hold on, I have it right here. Um, they're going to be dropping classics like Goldfinger, Scarface, and SpongeBob. And SpongeBob, the cuts will... no, I love SpongeBob. Yeah, and and the cuts will keep coming. Analysts warn, even as Netflix spends over two billion for li- licensing rights over the next year. Older movies and TV shows that are available on cable and competing streaming services are most vulnerable. So far, the new content strategy is working great, at least for Netflix. The original series, led by the drama House of Cards, grabbed 14 Emmy noms on Thursday that was morning. Good. And uh, Arrested Development, they have been in talks to do a second season. And I don't know if any of you guys have watched, but I've been watching that Orange is the New Black. I want to see. I've heard that. that's good, but I haven't seen it yet. It's honestly, I'm about five episodes in, and um, the funny part is, I, I watched the first episode, and you know, I like to throw shit out when I go to bed. And there, it's hour long. It's an hour long TV series, and it's done by Genji, Genji or Genji Cohen, the same person who did Weeds, and I enjoyed Weeds, and um, it was okay. But then I watched uh, Woody did a Mail Monday or something the other day. And I kind of watched where he talked about it and how much he enjoyed it. So I'm like, you know, I'll go back and give another chance. Like the other day, like on Sunday, I put it on and I watched like three episodes in a row. And it really got my interest. Kind of getting some catch the characters, and it kind of filled up over the couple episodes that you get to see, you know, kind of why they're there. And it doesn't like just come out and say why they're there, but it kind of shows the building like different parts from each episode on, you know, what led to their um, impact and why they're in prison. 
So I think you it's know, a, I think it's a good show. I think it's well written, and I think it's got good character development. I'd like I'd like to check that show out. There's a lot of shows I'd like to check out, but I'm I don't watch a lot of TV to begin with, so I'm always kind of selective about what I'm watching. I've been watching a lot of Thirty Rock lately because it's mindless and funny and whatever. But um, one of the things that Netflix mentioned in that article is that they basically want to become the online streaming HBO, and they said they want to beat eat HBO to it before HBO can do it and make like a streaming service. So now they want to be something where, you know, initially their their business model when they were sending DVDs to people, they said was, we want to have the biggest library possible so that any movie you could possibly want to see, you can order, no problem. Once the streaming became so popular, they said, well, we don't need to do that. People are still using it anyways, and our market research shows that most people watch shows anyways. Well, most people are watching shows because you don't have a fucking dick's worth for selection of movies, Netflix. Um, so it's not like out of, like, just by choice and mentation, we've chose shows over movies. It's that you have a fucking shitty selection to begin with. So now they're basically using this as free reign to be like, well, if we feel like getting a movie that's newer, yeah, sure, we'll throw it in there, but otherwise we're going to do exclusives and we're going to be the HBO online. So they're I, totally changing their dynamic and, yeah. I have a B-horror film that you need to watch. It's called Girls Gone Dead. <laughs> it has um, Jerry the King Lawler in it. Right on. Which... Uh, Pretty much at the end of the movie is what makes the entire movie, and it's got um, the actor Beetlejuice, like Michael the really Keaton. short, the short Beetlejuice guy. Michael Keaton. His name is Field, not Michael Keaton. He's um. Got the hair. He's like a really short uh, black dude. Oh, the guy, the guy from Howard Stern. Yeah. That Beetlejuice guy. Okay. Is it at name. all related to like the stripper zombie movie? Not. No, it's like they're trying to like make fun of girls gone wild. <laughs> That's not dead. <laughs> and there's they're a dead. there's a scene with Beetlejuice. Is like he's in all the the commercials for the girls gone wild commercials. And one of them, it's just like two topless girls sitting next to him, and he goes, "I have a boner." <laughs> <laughs> and that's what starts it. Perfect. Love I it. like Netflix how they always have the knockoff shit in like Redbox, where it's like. You know, if something comes out like you know, what they had like Lincoln Slayer or Vampire Slayer, and then what do you, what is Joe doing? Sorry, I muted my mic. Cause I'll, <laughs> I got a salad from Surf Wife, and I'm oh, gonna like, shake it in the container, and I didn't want to do it loudly into the microphone, so I just uh, realized that all you guys see is this <laughs> instead, instead of this. But, uh, I just I love the knockoff movies. How to cover that? But go ahead. Well, I, I just think it's funny how, like, the red, red Box, like, I don't know if they're trying to, like, confuse you to where they'll throw, like, a movie that, like, kind of looks like the movie that just came out to, like, real theaters. Well, like, they oh. prey on morons like me. Like, it happens to me in actual stories. I, for, actually, you know what, Tim, it was it was for your grandpa. For his birthday, I, I asked your aunt, I was like, what kind of stuff does he like? Because, he, obviously, your grandpa's hard to buy for. Yeah. And um, she was like, oh, you know, obviously anything with dogs. And I thought, you know what, he'll, for, he'll fucking love Marley and Me. You know, he'll like that movie. So I go and buy what I think is Marley and Me, only until my dumbass gets home and realizes that it's Marley and Me 2, the puppy years. But, like, they made mm. the two really kind of ambiguous and behind, like, a thing, and it looked like the regular cover. So I got wow. duped into buying this piece of shit, and, and you know me. Like, I'm too lazy to go back and return the fucking thing, so I didn't. <laughs> Oh, man. It was like in a $5 bin, you know? Like, I'm not going to go back for the five fucking bucks, you know? It's not no, worth it to me. It's not worth my time. But, yeah. You need to make it worth your time, man. I think it's becoming a tradition every week that I shove food into my fat fucking mouth every week because Surf Wife is nice enough to come home and... It is, but my, my whole question is, I mean, I live closer than the other two, so why the fuck doesn't Surf Wife bring me some food? Exactly. <laughs> I'm eating almonds. I mean, you know, I'm cool with Surf Wife. If she wants to stop on by, drop off a salad. I'll take a salad. If she wants to drop <laughs> by a fucking ta I Just don't bring Taco Bell. I mean, you know, last time Taco I had Taco Bell. Bell, it was not a good morning. That was after Edward Forty Hands. I had Taco Bell right before it. <laughs> it was not a good... I was. My boss came in the next day and looked at me and says, what's wrong with you? You need to go home. <laughs> so, Better than yeah. White Castle. Not because the alcohol, because the Taco Bell smell. Yeah. That's so funny. Well, the fact is, you know, not that he, you know, he inhaled the sweat that I was, you know, expelling from my body. Wouldn't that be funny if that was a punishable offense? Do I smell Taco Bell in your breath? You need to go home. <laughs> You're driving under the influence of shitty food. Exactly. Yeah. I think the White hell, Castle's worse. You're not allowed to come to work and, and have McDonald's. You smell like McDonald's. Go home. You couldn't afford. You what? You couldn't afford Burger King with the money I pay you? Seriously. It's funny because a lot of people talk about 
um, White Castle being the worst, but I think that I don't know if I read this. I think that their ingredients are more legit than Taco Bell. I think Taco Bell, in terms of ingredients, are pretty bad. I think a lot of people think White Castle is worse than it is because they steam their burgers and they think people think that that all that water is grease when it's oh, not. I was implying the next day. <laughs> oh, the next day. Okay. When you got to use the ba- bathroom, White Castle's by far the worst. <laughs> Dude, I'm, I'm not going to argue that, man. It's I they call them sliders for a reason, right? I love White Castle. White I love trash. their. Hel- I love their hella fucking hella fucking pino burger, man. Give me a give me a dozen of those things, I'm good to go. I mean, you don't want to be around me the next day, but most people <laughs> most people don't want to be around me any day. So it's just another another day in the life of Sean. I didn't even know you could get jalapeno cheese until you told me. One day we were working together, oh, yeah. and it's like, dude, let's get some uh, white cast. And you're like, yeah, but only if there's jalapeno cheese. I'm like, what? And they're outrageous about it too. They charge you like 35 cents a fucking slice of cheese. They're they're, they're way better though. They're the best ones by they far. They are the best ones by far. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, it, you know, the nice part is that it's not like a generic shitty jalapeno cheese. You can really taste the – it, like, lights your mouth on fire. It's, and that's yeah. what I liked about it is it, Some it, good adds that, it adds that little needed spark. And, it, and you oh. know, it, 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 it's nice when it goes in, and it feels wonderful when it comes out. Yeah. This is totally a nuanced up. thing. And we should talk about this on the show anyways, but um, – one one thing that always bothers me about the way my mom pronounces jalapenos, she doesn't say jalapeno, she just says jalapeno, and I don't know what the technical one is. I don't really care. It just bothers me because it's out of out of the norm, and I'm like, God damn it, don't say pino, say pino. But that brings me to this thing I posted on Facebook, and someone's like, you should talk about this at length. Um, it bothers me when people suddenly turn Italian for two words when they say instead of mozzarella, I say mozzarella or ricotta, is ricotta or whatever. Okay. My whole thing is, uh, I'm all about pronouncing things correctly. No, chi. But it bothers me when I feel like you're doing it to try and behave cultured. You know what I mean? Like, I don't like know. Quinoa. Margaretti. I try and say things correctly. If we say if we said quesadillas, everyone would think we're fucking morons, for, unless you're doing it for to be But we say quesadillas. It's the correct way to say it. But is it as pretentious as mozzarella? I don't. I don't think so. (laughs) I just find something pretentious about it. Am I the only one? (laughs) Chow there. No, I I agree. I mean, it's like fucking just say the goddamn word. You know, it's what are you trying to draw fucking attention to yourself? Douchebag. Right. They're just talking, and all of a sudden mozzarella and spaghetti, and you're like, what just happened to you? (laughs) Are you the same person? No, it's Mario came up and fucked him in the ass. That's what's going on, man. They fucking became Italian all of a sudden. <laughs> Seriously. No, I read your thing. I mean, it's ridiculous. And, you know, I don't see a whole lot of people doing that, thank God. But, you know, when you're shopping, you kind of hear it more. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're over by the cheese and, you know, it's like, seriously, dude. Or, like, especially when they're, like, they're at the deli and they're asking for something. You know, then they fucking jump into their fucking Italian voice. Right. It's like, it's like dude, there's nothing Italian about you. Seriously. Exactly. Douche. So, Everybody's a douche to me. Well, hey, you know. Sorry. No, don't it's be. Not, not to offend anybody, but you're probably a douche. Oh, by the way, I haven't said it this show, but fuck Boston. Thank you. <laughs> what about Hallmark Holidays? What, 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 go on Hallmark Holidays? <laughs> it was funny. Uh, Tim commented on our last Sean or, or Surf and Shake. And he was like, the show should just be called How Far Can Sean Take It Until Surf Gets Embarrassed? And then, <laughs> and I'm like, you know what's funny is, like, I'm genuinely not embarrassed. My, my fir- the first couple ones that we did, I was a little like, ah, hopefully people will be able to receive this well. Because when it's us on a show, I think when people can see you, it's more accessible. And we're like, I wonder what these guys are going to think of Sean. And it turns out it's one of my most popular series. And not that I would try and change the content anyways or change your personality in some way. But it's funny because... At first, I was a little bit shy, but now I'm just like, hey, I, I like that we represent good and evil. <laughs> well, that's exactly. It's kind of funny because that's what Keem and Blade mentioned last week is like, yeah. you know, Blade's, Blade's good and Keem's evil. And I was going to say, you know, I don't want to fucking compare us to him, but it's kind of like what it is. It's like, and you can hear it in the commentary this week when we're talking is, you know, and I just fucking rip into the fucking online date and you're like, dude, that's not right. You know, totally, I was like. Totally, because I don't think that's fucking legitimate. <laughs> You and I have no problem disagreeing with each other. Hmm. It's a friendly disagreement. I mean, you know, after after we finished filming the commenta- commentary, we went out in the fucking parking lot, beat the crap out of each other for a few minutes, 69, then everything was good, right? Yeah, we had a little a, a mutual circle jerk, blowy, you know, whatever, and it worked out. I mean, Surf Wife was uncomfortable with it, but hey, 
You know what? Well, someone's got to film. Yeah, exactly. Seriously. And that's part of the 100th episode, the 100th uh, video. Dude, I'm so stoked for the 100th video. Is guys. that coming out? Mm-hmm. This is 98. I'll do one on Thursday for 99, and then 100 will go out on Friday. Friday. I, that's I, the goal, dude. Yeah, that's going to be kind of cool, man. I can't wait to see it, man. Do I put a lot of fucking... Put a lot of fucking... A lot of hours into it. Um, that's something that bothers me, though, that I'll see other YouTubers do in the annotations. Like, I worked really hard in this video. Can I get a thumbs up? No, you're not getting a thumbs up just because you worked hard. We all work hard in the videos. You get thumbs ups because you make quality content. and Everyone does, like, the... Hey, like... Thumbs up for this fail. Thumbs up for like just random whatever. But like one like, one respect. I guess I just ha right. I guess I just have a problem with people asking for them to like the videos because they worked hard on it. You know, I mean, I'm sure Hitler worked really hard at being an asshole. You know, I mean, it doesn't mean that people are deserving of his respect. You know, like thumbs up the video because you're down with what I'm saying and like you know, evoking that out of your audience through annotations being playful is one thing, but asking it on the merits that you just worked hard, I think, is bogus. Like, Hey, and you know what I like to talk about, too, is, God, your Skate 3 gameplay is the worst gameplay I have ever, <laughs> Dude, ever fucking I wanted seen. Dude, I, I wanted to mention it. Go ahead, go ahead, continue. It's, it is so fucking funny. And it's, it's not just, like, one. It's every fucking Skate 3 gameplay. Like, mm -hmm. I've never, like, I suck at most video games. And like I don't think if I if I close my eyes and fucking put a fucking bandana over it, turn backwards and still play that I could do that bad. Dude, you know what's funny is we'll, maybe we'll do a video on this and you can try the same challenges I've done on there. The reason I didn't like this game at first is because the physics are, physics are pretty spot on, and so what they've really concentrated on in this game is subtle technique. So every time you hold the you use the right trigger to jump. Every time you hold down to get into that, that crouch stance and then ollie by flicking up, um, the way he ollies is completely dependent on how quickly you swipe and in what direction you go in. And so, believe it or not, the, jumping those gaps and all that shit is so hard to do, dude. You will fucking get so fr I guarantee you, Shank, you will be so frustrated by this game in 10 minutes you won't want to fucking play it anymore. You know, you know what's fun about it is... Like I'm, I'm watching you play. Like today on your. It's genuinely um, difficult. Yeah, dude. but I'm watching you play, and I'm like rooting for him. Like, come on, dude, pump it one more time and make that jump. It's like I almost <laughs> have to watch it a second time just to listen to the commentary because I'm rooting for you in the fucking game to make the goddamn jump that you tried 52 times. It's funny. This guy who's followed me for a long time, um, D. A. Ryan said he was like typical served up gameplay. Hit me up if you need some good Call of Duty gameplay. I'm like, fuck yeah, brother, I'll take that shit. Like. You should throw on some subs gameplay. I would love that. Them. If I could get a hold of some, I would love that. So it's a if this is a, this is a call out to to all subs. If you've got good gameplay, I'll be more willing to put it on the channel. I think it is kind of funny that's sort of becoming a hallmark of my channel of how how bad I am at video games. The yeah, thing is though, cool. is that genuinely Skate Three is a difficult game. If you play it yourself, you will find that it like that last video, the video I just put up today where I can't clear that gap. I literally there's a whole half hour segment <laughs> that I I cut out I'm like. <laughs> I tried that challenge for like a solid thirty minutes, and like, and then and then you see when I finally succeed at it, I did nothing different. I did the standard three pumps. I left at the same time I usually do. It's really all about getting the physics down. The other thing about the game too is after three pumps, you're at your maximum speed. So there's there's nothing you can do you can do outside of that. So see, I it guess it's been my problem. I'm always like, dude, pump one more time, you'll make the fucking jump. That's the thing is that if you pump too many times, then the problem is it doesn't give you enough time to set up your ollie. So what happens is then if I get that extra pump in, right? If I put that extra that extra pump in, uh, it doesn't give me enough time to hold down and then press up. So if I just flick down and then up to get off the ledge really quick, it doesn't set it up right. So what he does is a baby ollie. He doesn't do a full jump. Maybe you so you let, you should let Surf Wife play it. She could have cleared it quickly. You have well, to set it up that way. So yeah, I know it's an abysmal gameplay. I thought I'd make mention of like how truly hard I think that Skate 3 is, but then I thought, people have no expectations of good gameplays for me, so why should I try to start raising the bar now? Dude, I think it's fucking funny. It made, like I said, it made me watch the video twice. Just the first time, I'm rooting for you to make the goddamn jump, and then the second time, I'm fucking rooting for you. I'm, like, listening to what you're saying. It's, it's funny because I would almost really love to create some kind of success on YouTube having a gaming channel where the gaming content is so bad. <laughs> honestly, that I, be funny? I honestly, I stuff at work, and 
I, I don't even look at the gameplay most of the time. Like, well, that's the I, thing I, is, I, I want to hear what you have to say. It's more like a podcast for me. I guess it's a, it's a plus and a, mi- and a minus because basically I'm making I'm making content for me first and foremost, and so that means that I make content that I would like to see. And because you know I, I end up liking guys like Woody and Blade and whoever because I, I I don't even care about the gameplays at some point, you know. So for me, it's just it's just something to drone out to. So I figure, hey, if if people are on that same tip, those are the type of people that are going to enjoy my channel anyways, so this way I don't have a bunch of people coming here thinking one thing and getting another. You know, the expectation is from the outset, you watch my gameplays, you're like, yeah, I'm not here to see how good this guy is at a video game, because he's not good at any. Well, how funny would that be if I, if I became successful on YouTube with, like, a half of a gaming channel, because the other half is music? Not that it's split very equally as of lately, anyways, I've been doing a ton of commentaries. But how funny would that be if I had a successful channel doing something that I'm very poor at? <laughs> I can record my uh, PC game playing, but I don't have a video capture card for my Xbox. I want you to know, it's like, I'm not bashing you for your bad gameplay, I think it's fucking funny. Because I'm just as bad, if I was doing the same thing, I guarantee you I'd fucking... I, you're right, I probably after 10 minutes would fucking... The controller would be in a fucking wall, my fist would be next to the controller, and I'd be in the hospital getting fucking my... Hand reset because I just broke it. Danny, it bothered me. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So Andy has to buy a new TV. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly the, 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 the Cinco Cinco would be done. The problem I had with this game is any. Sk- I haven't played a skate game since like N64, but the last one I played was like, you can do these magical feats of trickery by just getting enough momentum, and it's just not the way this game is designed. Hey, um, sir, if someone wants to hear your Morgan Freeman. My oh, impression of Morgan. Fre- I don't have an impression. Your inner, your inner Morgan Freeman. <laughs> I think Get it. my inner Morgan Freeman comes out in just about every commentary. Because I'm usually explaining something. And that's what Morgan Freeman does, right? I just watched that South Park episode. Have you guys seen that with Cartman and the fireworks? Or uh-huh. not the fireworks, the um, the ballot boxes and all the votes he stole? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. They're like, we need Morgan Freeman to come in and explain it. And Morgan Freeman comes and explains it. But no, They're I don't have some a good Morgan Freeman. Voice. I think that's pretty much all my commentaries. That is Morgan Freeman, and I try and sound insightful or spread some wisdom I have and do it in an entertaining way. Yeah, it's just when you get those big words and I have to sit here. See, I can't watch the video at work because, as per our last Surf and Shank is, anything big I have to clap out. So today I was watching a Surf video, <laughs> Surf wrote, and I'm clapping all this stuff out. My whole management team runs in. They want to know what the hell is going on. I was, I was so excited about Thought maybe, you know, I got promoted or something, and I was just like, no, I'm sorry, I was just reading a text message. I had to clap out the <laughs> superficial. It's like, Jesus Christ, what the hell is going on I'm here? Big so, US. Yeah, exactly. Do we, do we have a spirit rally happening? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Didn't realize we had a fucking spirit squad in the office, jackass. That's funny shit. Oh, sorry I'm eating, guys. I'm just so fucking hungry and I don't give a fuck. <laughs> it's okay. I mean, I haven't ate since noon, but hey, you know, if you got to shove your fucking fat face through fucking the podcast, it's fine. I love the comment that gameplay was painful. <laughs> That's just oh, yeah. awesome. Well, of course it was painful. The fucking guy smacked his face into the goddamn wall 15 times in a row. <laughs> yeah, I thought that part of what made it entertaining too is that I continually fail at it, and I'm still playing the game all happy. Like, ah, oh, we'll just get, we'll keep get up and try again, you know. That's sort of the message on my whole channel. It's like, hey man, fuck everyone else, get up and try again. F them, F them, F them. My my gameplays reflect that. Um. Did you guys read the article about what's his name? Soka Boron or Baron? Whoever played Borat, what's his name? Oh, Sasha, Sasha Baron. Cohen. No, I did not. You know that guy. And that guy. You know he's he's funny, and I've watched you know some of his movies. What happened? When he did that, he used to have that HBO show on years ago, and I was coming through it one day, and I watched it, and I thought it was funny, I but I watched. Know. God, what the hell was the movie? The one where he's Dick the Dictator, a duh, Dictator a few weeks ago. And it had its funny parts, but it's like, I didn't fucking, like, you know, bust a gut laughing. I was like that with Borat, too. I, I, I never felt anything towards it. I just thought that the story was funny. So to answer Yellow Bus's question, um, what happened was... Is that Portillo's? Yeah, yeah it is. They got one in Arizona. Burn in hell, fucking surf. They're, they're making a you second one. surf wife around. to go get Portillo's. I'll take a couple hot dogs, some fries, no drink. Anyway, anyway, Chains anyway. Right anyway. Over. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry to interrupt. No, no, no. Okay, here, let me open the thing so I can describe it better than what I'm about to do. The Portillo's? Uh, it was an Esquire. <clears throat> it said, um, <laughs> God damn these fucking advertisements. I just want to read the fucking article. God. 
This is one of my dilemmas you about having a bacon ever... cheeseburger. Is that a salad? You only have a salad, or do you I got a salad, burger? and then Jamie, Jamie wanted to split a fry, so I'm eating some fries. But we usually get the chopped salad, and then um. Oh, dude, that fucking chopped salad there is fucking awesome. Chopped salad's good. I love the bacon cheeseburger and a dry like dipping sauce in the sides. But, but it was sad because right? like whenever I went there with my ex, she would always be like, "Oh, I want to get a salad." I'm like, seriously, you're not gonna have a fucking beef, a hot dog, you know, fucking salad. I'm like, burn it hell. Fuck Boston. So the chopped salad's good though. Oh, that's so sweet of you, Sean. Um, <laughs> did she move to Boston? Is that the joke? Yes, that's that's where it all comes from. I don't right. hate Boston because she moved there. I hate Boston because they're douchebags. <laughs> but yeah, that's where. All right, that so was the I went to Boston so many times. Go ahead, sir. This is what the article says. It's just a short story. I'll just read it. It says we were shooting a TV segment one time in Sedona, Arizona, and Borat was interviewing this Sedona, new age yes. guy who was channeling angels through an energized cast iron pyramid. The guy asked Borat to take off his clothes and lie down on a cot. The guy then began to chant and channel the angels. But while the guy was chanting, Borat began to masturbate under the sheets, at which point the serene and gentle angel channeler did that thing that, that Americans sometimes do. He just snapped. He went absolutely crazy. He screamed something like, Why are you masturbating in my pyramid? This is a no way to treat angels. You have, com you have committed a sin and contaminated my aura. Angels hate that. Um... Soka had managed to grab his underpants and jump into the back of the van. We drove off and collected ourselves and ended up shooting a segment at a drum circle not far away. All of a sudden, we hear police sirens. The police separated the director and then me and then Sasha to hear out our individual stories. So I gave them my story. The director gave his. And then I went over to Sasha... Um, expecting to hear him say, look, I'm really sorry, I was just doing this for a television show, etc., etc. Instead, what I heard was, I do not understand what you mean, Master B. I can't do a good Borat impression. Master B. There was no way this was ever going to be seen by anyone, but nonetheless, he was remaining steadfast in character. The police were so frustrated by their inability to understand him that they just said, okay, look, if you leave Sedona now, we won't press any charges. So he basically yeah, just faked him out with his accent the whole time. I just thought that was amusing. There's nothing That's profound about it, but I think it's amusing. I can understand that area is like very like touristic and yuppie, so I can see them being crazy about that kind of stuff. How funny is it though to fool like to frustrate a cop so bad with your non talk that they're just like, listen, just get out of here. <laughs> that's too funny. I mean, that's, I mean, that's funny. I mean, and that's why he's a he's you know he's a character, and I guess it's a selective humor. Like I said, you know, when it was when it's in like ten minute skits, it's funny. But when you take it over an hour and a half, and it's the same bullshit over and over again, it, it gets old. It's like almost every SNL skit turn movie ever made. Yeah, exactly. Which is every SNL skit, right? Has been turned into a movie. I mean, some of them turned out well, I think, but I don't know if I can be said about the majority of them. Yeah, how many uh, have really? How many really turned out well? I mean. I mean, I guess there have been a couple decent SNL movies. So, how about... Um, Neither Roxbury. His History of the World uh, just became a series. Really? Mel Brooks' History of the World? No, the um, the one on YouTube with... Uh, who's in it? History... I forget what it's called. Hold on. Let me let me look it up. Uh, they do, like... Um, they talk about just one person from history, and they... It's... Uh, Oh, fuck. I can't remember the guy's name right now. The guy from The Hangover, the Wolfpack guy. Oh, Zach Galifianakis. Yeah, he's in a few of them. It's got... Um, oh, Drunk History. Drunk History, that's it. I was like, what is going to say it's, that. It's Comedy Central it was Drunk right. History, yeah. Yeah, they, they're putting it on Comedy Central now. Yeah. That's no pretty shit, funny. Dude. I see that on Hulu all the time. That commercial makes me laugh when he's like... Yeah, I heard it actually isn't that bad. What's, so what's the premise of drunk history? I don't even fucking know. People that know history pretty well just get drunk, right? And they just tell it and they're really fucked up. Like, they're, like, blacked out telling it. Here, let me, um, I actually learned a lot. Yeah, so, like, this one with Jack Black, a guy drinks eight vodka cranberries. <laughs> and then um, talks... Solid. That's the one about Benjamin Franklin. Oh, I saw that one, too, yeah. Yeah. The second is really intriguing. They just get drunk and then they ask someone about history. Dude, just, yeah, just look that? up drunk history on YouTube. But uh, I was on Hulu and, and Chrissy started watching that, and I watched the John Wilkes Booth one, and it was really funny because 
they kind of explain it really well, and it's just you you tend to listen more because it's just like a guy talking to you instead of like this elaborate story. It's just like. Yeah, you know, it was like fucking like twin brother was like cooler than him, and his, you know, his dad was like, you know, when they were taking a picture, you know, they, it was like, yeah, get the fuck out of the picture, you're you're no good, and like they the, kind of just set up the premise of the whole thing. I think the Jack Black one too. The guy starts throwing up in the bathroom and keeps going on about <laughs> Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> oh man, Benjamin <laughs> Franklin's my hero. That's funny. You know, else is interesting. It's a it's a bad week to be Ryan Reynolds. I can tell you that much. What's the story with him? Uh, you know, he had that. Um, he was he was the lead in Turbo, the cartoon. Oh, I saw that. That was good. And then it was also that. Um, and what is it? The DYPD or whatever it is. What the hell's the name of that movie that just came out? R.I.P.D. R.I.P.D. Yeah. Yeah, he was in both of them, and they got beat by that Conjuring movie. Which I oh, saw really? that too. And yeah, that low, movie is bad a low budget horror ass. movie. A low Conjuring... budget horror movie beat them both. It's supposed to be creepy as fuck. I I really like The Conjuring. I saw Turbo. Turbo was good. It was uh, a pretty good movie. But uh, dude, the con the Conjuring is a different it's a different thing entirely. Like it's it's not as scary as some scary movies, but the overall story is just so enthralling. I I enjoyed it a lot. I'm not really into scary movies. I don't like I don't like shitting my pants. Um, the new Evil Dead. I want to go see that on Redbox. I didn't even know there was a new one. Yeah, how was that? How was the new Evil Dead? Because I, I like the old one. Yeah. But, uh, well, I love Bruce Campbell. He's awesome. I think I think that's a thing. I mean, Bruce Campbell is. Did he direct uh, it? The original? No, the the mm-hmm. current the current one, right? Uh, I don't think so, but I don't know. I'm just saying I don't think, I don't think so. I don't I don't think so either. He may have had some kind of input, but Sam Raimi was the one who did the original Evil Dead. And he's also the guy who did the first three Spider-Man movies. I'm eating a tamale now, if anyone cares. <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. a Evil My Dead 1, cares. Evil Fucking Dead 2, and then there. Army of Darkness. Army of Darkness, Darkness was awesome. Dude, uh, um, Tim, didn't I turn you on to Army of Darkness at my house that one time? Uh, I think we watched it. when I think, I think I might have watched it the first time at your place, but I watched Evil Dead 1 before that. I think... I, I just remember you being one. at the house and being like, you were like, it's is it supposed to be horror or comedy? And I was like, it's kind of both. And you're like, oh. <laughs> it was horror. Because the, 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 the first one was supposed to be a horror, but then this, I forgot who showed me it, but they showed me and I was like, this is like a comedy. And then like the second one was okay. And I, I feel like they just didn't have a, a true identity. And then like when I was talking to you probably about the first one because I was confused. It's probably when you're like, well, well, shit, like, let's watch the third one, and the third one's like complete comedy. <laughs> yeah, dude, like, it def- the dynamic of the series evolved over time, and it's funny how it's become a cult classic that's known in, in like, this comedy horror genre now, because that first one wasn't supposed to be funny at all, but there's so many parts in it where, like, with the way the characters pop out, like, out of the floor, like, whatever, like, it's it's so comical that you, you're like, I'm supposed to laugh, right? Like, it doesn't really seem horrifying. <laughs> It is a really yeah. awkward emotion if you don't know what to expect out of it. You're like, am I supposed to laugh or be horrified? I don't, I don't like really know what they're going for. But when he's going through like the the house and it's like a 20 minute chase scene, you're like, oh come on, dude. Right. That's part of what makes it so funny because it's so absurd. Like, how do you have this elaborate <laughs> chase scene in like this like six by six, you know, whatever? But I think I think that's what set it off and made it so different from anything else. Is it basically made fun of itself, you know? Sort of like us. A- absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Not original anymore. <laughs> well, what what <laughs> what's originality? Look at Kanye. Yeah. What's the original yeah, exactly. I saw a Kanye uh, concert. Sorry um, to hear that. Well, I was I was Lollapalooza, Radiohead, Rage Against the Machine, and then I was like, I've never seen a rap concert. I'm gonna go see Kanye. You know, funny part is I've only you know I, I'm a huge rap fan, and I've only been to a couple concerts. I've seen Nine Inch Nails twice, and the only rap concert I saw. Uh, the reason I went was to see the Ghetto Boys, and it was when they released their album, and they ended up getting pulled off of the tour, and I only ended up seeing the biggest one I saw there was Ice Cube, which Ice Cube and Too Short, which is still cool, but... I mean, Ice I don't Cube is watered cool. down. Well, thank you. Brought, Unintended. I think womp, I said womp, that, womp. that was ago. a joke. That was a joke three weeks ago. When we yeah, covered sorry, I'm time. not original. I never claimed to be original. <laughs> no, but, but, you know... I'm go sorry, ahead. go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just going to say, like, I was going to ask, can I explain why hip-hop concerts bother me? 
The reason they bother me is this. When you wrap something, for our viewers and probably for everyone here too who's not a practicing musician, when a singer sings, they sing in what's called a key. They're, what it, Basically all a key is is saying, hey, here's these set of notes that you can use that work for this song. If you sing outside of them, it's going to sound funny. That's why when someone sucks at singing and they're out of key, you notice it. You're like, oh, people commonly call it, hey, he can carry a tune, or he can't carry a tune. That's singing in a key, okay? With rap, you're not rapping in a key most of the time. Now, like Bone Thugs in Harmony are actually, they, they were trained singers, well, I don't know if they were trained singers, but they, they knew how to sing in a key, so yeah, often the melodies too. were in a key, okay? Which was one of the things that made them very original and different at the time. What often happens is rappers are unaware of this. In fact, I would venture to say most rappers that start out have no idea about this whole thing with keys. So what happens is when they get into a studio and they rap not in a key, but they have this backbeat or whatever that has musical notes in it, often what producers will do, unknowing to the rapper, is bump up or bump down the voice so that it falls into a, a, a generic part of the key. So that even your rap words being monotone or having different inflections still don't sound awkward against the backdrop of music. With hip-hop concerts, this isn't possible to modulate the voice in real time. So two things happen. The rappers who already have no idea how to, how to sing in key are not only not singing in key, but now they've taken it upon themselves to just shout into the microphone the entire time. And so rap concerts don't even sound a little bit like the record, and so I can't appreciate them. Where my bitch is at? That's it. And then there's always one guy who's like, what? There you go, go. What? There you like go, go. Band? What? Yeah. Throw your motherfucking hands up. And it gets Throw so, your motherfucking it gets so hands bad up. that, to me, I can't enjoy it. If it doesn't sound anything like the, the original, then I can't really respect it. If it sounds better than the original, I'll give you kudos. But otherwise, if it doesn't sound anything like it, just shouting the microphone, it pisses me off. Go, Ninja. Go, Ninja. Go. <laughs> uh. yeah, like I said, there was one concert I went to. Ice Cube did a good job. Too Short did a good job. You know, they had a bunch of, you know, never been, has been, wanted to be, never was. And, uh, you know, the main reason I went sort was for like the Ghetto us. Boys. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The, the main reason I went was for the Ghetto Boys, and they got fucking pulled. And I never got to see them in concert. And I just missed them touring now. But I'm sure they'll do it again, and next time I will go. That sucks, man. Yeah, it is what it is. But, you know, by the fact that, you know, now we're, you know, 24 years later after the Ghetto Boys first came out, they just did a fucking basically nationwide tour. They're They'll bad. do it again, and I'll go see it next time. Yeah, hopefully, man, hopefully one of them doesn't kill themselves or get murdered or overdose on no, something. Well, honestly, I mean, they both, two of them were just, just got out of prison two years ago. One guy shot himself in the eye does, as a fucking glass eye. So <laughs> I, think they've been, I think they've been through everything. There's, there's one concert that I will always try to see, and that's uh, Iron Maiden, because they are awesome live. I think I, I saw them one time at like a festival, like an Ozfest maybe. That was the only time. You know who else is awesome live? Nine Inch Nails. Awesome show live. Nine Inch Nails, Two Inch Dick. Well, we're not talking about my penis. We're talking about a band. <laughs> true story, true story. It um, is. I'm I'm scanning through the topic list here, and we've actually covered a lot of them today, guys. Yeah, we did fly through them. I was just looking down about five minutes. Yay ago. for us! Like it's it's half and half. It's either like we cover no topics or we cover them all, and then we're like, what the fuck? Okay, so the last one I I was interested in that I can notice at least right now is will Microsoft lure major cable companies? So Sean, you know more about this than I do. Yeah, I mean it's it's a major thing. I mean everybody saw the um, Xbox One launch, correct? I mean we all mm -hmm. pretty much know about the Xbox One. We know about the PlayStation Four. Um, you know, they're focusing a lot on entertainment. That one is kind of, you know, your one device for everything. And, you know, now I guess they're trying to, you know, hook up with the major cable companies to, you know, make that their one source where, you, you know, you run your cable through them. And, I mean, I don't see why not. Microsoft's huge. Why, why the hell can't they? Why can't they get what they want? I was wondering yeah, how long it was going to take before that idea was proposed because so much of the general viewership share does have gaming devices and consoles now, you know? Yep. Why not? I mean, seriously, if I can eliminate my fucking cable box and Quite run my cable, my cable through my Xbox, which is going to be on, I know it's not going to be always on, but why not fucking leave it on all the time and not have the cable box and eliminate one more fucking electronic in my house? You know, why don't you just fucking take the fucking Xbox One Make it my surround sound and let me hook my fucking speakers up to it. Right. You want to be one? Then fucking make everything. You want to be my, my one? You want my HDMI one? Then seriously, you need to be the one. And the, and the one. And build a flashlight into the side of the console. 
Wait, I, I do that myself with every council I get. Is that <laughs> I've wrong? Always, I've I always thought... been intri I've been intrigued by the flashlight. I've never purchased one, but I've always considered it. Hey, if you want to come over, I have an extra one that I don't use. It's just in case one breaks. Did, don't always, you just well, you don't have, have a backup. You don't have one that's like a Chinese finger trap? No, oh, I got that too, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't have any of that shit. That's why I they usually say keep... Go ahead. One of the spurious claims that I don't know if they if it's true or not is that because of jerking off, your dick gets desensitized because of the skin-on-skin -skin contact, and it actually roughens up your dick a little bit. Um, so they say when you start using something like a flashlight, because it's sort of like a, 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 an unassuming, ambiguous third partner, even though it's not, it's just you with a device, that it restores much of the sensitivity lost in the penis. There's a lot more judgment if a guy has a sex toy than a girl. You're yeah. supposed to have sensitivity in your penis? When was that? <laughs> I missed that memo. There is a lot of judgment, but it's a good thing I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw on the website once, too, they're like, they have like these like ass plugs for men. They're like, for the real man. <laughs> like, all right, hey, you know, I mean. If, I'm a real man. I shove stuff up my ass. I'm not going to lie. If, if, if my lady was into it and she really wanted to try it, I'd be like, yeah, yeah whatever. And, you know, YOLO, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I drink my alcohol. Ass once. I mean, how different can it be from taking a giant shit, right? You know, maybe well, it'll feel a little good. Of, you know, I mean, it, you know, instead of exit only, it's just like Ugh, it's like pushing the shit back up. Yeah, it's exactly, and then it, it stimulates all the right areas, and everyone's happy. Exactly. Hey, you know what? <laughs> if if I can feel good, get off, and get a prostate exam at the same time, I'm down. <laughs> hey, man, then you just then you have the million dollar invention. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'd like to have some kind of invention. Prostate feels slightly enlarged. <laughs> Sorry about that. I apologize. Uh, that is funny, though. Uh, it's all on me. Dude, I need, to get some, on me. I need to get some legit lighting down here. I'm tired of the fucking shadow puppets in the background. No, it's not that bad. I mean, since you, well, I mean, when you put when you you did a great job with your poster today, by the way. <laughs> See, it's all the poster's all fucked up. I don't even give a fuck about this stupid poster more. Fuck this poster. Wow, tell me how you really feel, Surf. You gotta cut a hole in it first, and then you stick it in. Yeah, if you're gonna cut a hole in it, can I have it? I really need a new friend. <laughs> it's lonely. These, it's lonely some nights out here. Motherfuckers, motherfuckers, motherfucks, fucks, fucks. So I think we pretty much clap, clap through everything. Anybody <laughs> have anything else? <laughs> Those big words, man. Astronomical. Did you check and got it taken care of? The uh, Steam Summer Sale just ended this week. Oh, no, see, the... you and Tim get PC game, but I don't, so that doesn't mean anything. I don't really I was buy the too many though. new ones. I mean, I, I got the Walking Dead game, and I, I was looking at the 400 days or 500 days later, or whatever that is. I have 166 games on Steam. I've probably played about 20 of them. Really? Yeah, I mean, I have, like... They go on sale for, like, 3 bucks. I'm like, well, I'll play it someday. Right, I'll stock up, man. Why not? I have, like, Civilization. I have... Uh, yeah, the, the problem with Civ Five is that you start playing the game, and then about six hours later, you're like, fuck, it's, like, four in the morning. What just happened? Yeah, they have all this, like, new DLC, and I'm just like, you know, I play it on easy and just destroy everyone. Like, it's, like, three ways to win, and I'll find all three ways to win in one game, and then I'll play it on, like, medium, and it's, like, just too hard. <laughs> I'm like, fuck this. <laughs> Yeah, but, you know, uh, like X Xbox just kind of ran the same thing, and so PlayStation runs it too. Where, I mean, it doesn't go as like cheap as three bucks. If it did, I think it would go balls out. But Xbox ran it a few, maybe two weeks ago, where they were doing a, a couple. I think we even talked about it. Like, let's say Borderlands, for example. I think it was only like Borderlands Two is like nine ninety nine, and they're offering it, you know, like the DLC for like half the price it would be, and they had like Mass Effect Two was like four ninety nine. And like oh, Assassin's shit. Creed was like four ninety nine, and um, Far Cry three was nineteen ninety nine. That game is sick. I love Far Cry three. I'm gonna put up some more Far Cry three gameplay soon. Actually, that's the last game I need to to truly beat before I beat all the games that I had on my Xbox. Yeah, Shane's going to get together to do those multiplayer missions. And I have them, man. I, mean, I, I got you that game, and I haven't even, I've, I've played maybe an hour or two into it. <laughs> Dude, I fucking and I'm in love the with co -op's that game. It's pretty sweet. Yeah, the co-op isn't bad. I I think one of the things I love most about games like that is that it does transport you to like another world. I can really appreciate the scenery and stuff. So it's cool that I feel like I can make my own choices in terms of how I want to navigate the land and 
basically what I'm doing now is instead of replaying through the campaign, I, I didn't realize up until a little while ago that you can reset all the enemy bases that you've captured. <laughs> so I just reset all the bases so I still have all the cool guns and achievements or whatever. And then what I did is I cranked up the difficulty level to, like, insanity. So everything's, like, super stealth, you know? And uh, my goal is, like, as I'm doing the second playthrough to capture all the bases, is I never use the map to navigate between bases. I always have to try and land nav on my own by landmarks. And then I always will try and take the base 100% stealth. Like, those are my little internal rules. And it's so fun because I'm getting this awesome second playthrough at a game, whereas, like, most games I won't do a second playthrough on because I just get bored. You know, so I love the replayability of it. And you know what's cool about that is you say it, and I'm not a big stealth. You've played a couple games with me. I like to run and gun. Oh, me like, too. Like The Last of Us, man, I've been playing that, and you have to get kind of fucking stealthy at times because, you know, you'll be overwhelmed by the fucking infected. And, dude, I've been having a good time sneaking up on people and fucking jamming a fucking knife in their neck and shit. And I'm not a big fan of stealth. I like to go in and just fucking die, motherfuckers. But That's my style, have a good too. Time. See, I really like the whole premise of sneaking around. Ever since the Metal Gear Solids, like it really turned me on to stealth mode type games. Which, oh. by the way, the new Metal Gear Solid looks like pretty badass. It looks like Red Dead Redemption meets Metal Gear Solid. But, uh, but yeah, like what I like about Far Cry 3 though is that it gives you the option to do either. You can run a gun in that game if you want to. There's no penalty for that, you know. So I think that's cool. You get more XP though if you don't set off the right. arms or whatever. True. True. The, the the only trade off is that like I think like two thirds of the way through the game is like you invariably end up with all of the attributes anyways so it's sort of arbitrary because it's not like that XP lends like some sort of favor to you later on after you've achieved all of the unlockables. Some so, of those bases are fucking hard to take too. Dude, some of them are man for sure. I love the challenge y'all. Like I'll save it right before I go to a base just so in case I do get noticed because sometimes I'll get down to the last guy and the last guy fucking sees me a split second before I kill him. <laughs> And then it's like 500 points. I'm like, you motherfucker, I want the 1,500, you know? What so dick. I'll start over. It is a dick move. But, uh, but yeah, you guys... So are you, do, do you guys play Metal Gear Solid? Uh, I'm really I bad at those first games. Two. <laughs> I played the fourth multiplayer, and that was pretty badass, or whatever. It was like the newest PS3 one. Dude, I don't think I've played one since Sons of Liberty for PlayStation 2, which I think was Metal Gear Solid 3 or something, 2 or 3. I haven't really avidly played one since then. I tried briefly to play the, the Jungle one that came out, I think, for PS3, or maybe it was still PS2. I don't even know. It's been a long time. Um, I just, but I, I borrowed it from a friend, and I didn't have time to finish it. So I'm really looking forward to this new one. It looks cool as fuck, man. I just got, like, Hitman Absolution for Xbox recently. I've only played the first mission so far because I have what I call gamer ADD, or I should say what everyone else calls gamer ADD, where I'll switch between games. Like yeah, once a day. I, I game fly, so I was like, fuck, fuck, fuck. I have two games. I gotta play that one. I gotta play that one. Then I got one I bought, and then I gotta play that one. And then all of a sudden it's like, well, fuck, well, I'm like, buy this one because I want a new one. I get to some point, play, point where I just keep dying, and I'm like, fuck this. I'll come back to it later. Yeah. I get like that too. I am slowly becoming a game hoarder because I'm always like, oh, I want to play all these different games, and because I don't have money to buy a lot of games, I w I want them even more. And then what ends up happening is like people lend me games or give me games or whatever. And right now I've got like a surplus of games. And not enough time to play them. So by the, I got, by the way, by the way, sir, if you still got two of my games, can I get them back? Right, I do need to. Oh, to, oh, and and the controller oh. too. By the way, I'm just uh, dude. I'm just giving you shit. You still got my my Borderlands and my Red Dead Redemption, but I don't give a shit. I'm I'll never play them again anyway. So oh, I, I got, totally forgot about that. So I thought you meant PlayStation Three because I've got your Saints Row Three. No, I gave Saints you Three I, is awesome, dude. I gave I gave you Saints Row Three. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, well, I have I have I have two other copies. So oh, um. But yeah, so like I've got to play through the other two Mass Effects, not to mention I got to finish up the first Skate Three. Um, you have the original Borderlands that you ever beat? I'll I'll play that again. That I never fun. beat the second playthrough of Borderlands. Three times, dude. I'm never that playing game. that game again. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've beat I've beat both Borderlands on the Xbox, on the PlayStation. The I beat play it on throughs. PC and Xbox. I never beat. I I played a little bit on PC, and the funny part is. I beat it the first time on, I don't know if it was Xbox or PlayStation, but then I played it on PC, and I was like, I don't like the PC, playing on a PC, and it's not to bash the PC, it's just the fact I'm like, it got me back in, and I went back, and oh, I beat it first on the Xbox, and then there was a huge deal, I was a PlayStation Plus member, and I even think at the time they were giving it for free, so I downloaded uh, the Border, Borderlands, and then I think the DLC was on like 999 for all four of them, so I went through and did it again on the, the PlayStation 3, and then a year later is when Borderlands 2 came out, so... No I love those games. Awesome. I love those games. I've only beat Borderlands 2 one time. We need to play that again. 
I've only beat it one time also. I've beaten it We could co-op. We, we should have co-ops co-op before. We should co-op more and more. We should have a, a night where we all co-op. And yeah, that'd be cool. Open. Although I only have Borderlands 2 for PC. I don't have for Xbox. Borderlands 1 I have on both. Oh, you're lame then. If it goes on sale, I'll probably pick it up. I Look, need to, uh... It was, like I said, it was just like two weeks ago on Xbox. It was on 9 99 Damn. And you can find it even at Best Buy, I think, now. Oh, yeah, like, that's something. I got Fable 3 for free as a download, so I've got that sitting Yeah, by the way, play. downloadable now. I got Assassin's Xbox Creed 2 for free. I was going to say that Assassin's Creed 2 is free on, on Xbox just, Live right now. It's just free. And I, I'm like, I, I played Assassin's Creed 1. Oh. I didn't really like it, but I'm just like, if it's free, fuck it. Maybe right, I'll download it before I go to bed. I like the first Assassin's Creed. I tried playing the second. But at the time, I had a small TV, and honestly, I couldn't read all small the little dick. things on the map, and I hated it. I was waiting it. for him to say that. <laughs> and then I had borrowed, um, I had borrowed one of the Assassin's Creeds from Jim, which I think I might still have. I got to return go. to him. Um, you know, you can um, start downloads on uh, Xbox.com. Oh no shit! Yeah, you, you can, can queue it up. I have queued it up, and then just turn it on, and it downloads it. All right. Yeah, that's. I'm doing that right now. <laughs> oh fucking a. Well, since I'm hosting, maybe I won't do that. I'll wait till I get off, and I'll just start the download. And I'll go yeah, upstairs. Then, and then all of a sudden, you'll be like, you'll be like a robot. You'll be like, yeah, do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Like, do the robot impression again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we should just do a whole show <laughs> like that. We should just pantomime a whole show. I think I just lost Sean. He doesn't know what pantomime means. Miming. Clap, clap, Sean. Sound it out, buddy. You can do it, big guy. <laughs> no, Sorry, I just I go in my own little world when you know Surf gets on these you know two three syllable words. I'm glad you mentioned that was on sale for free. So now I purchased it for zero Microsoft points. And that feels really good when you do that. It's funny. You're not the first person that's that's mentioned about me using too big too big of words. But I don't generally view, I guess, well, it's just, it's sort of arbitrary for me to say because it's just the way I speak, but I've never viewed my arbitrary. vocabulary. <laughs> I've never viewed my vocabulary as, as I don't know, it, it, I think well, it's or extensive. Or just, just, word, just listen extensive. to a surf and shank and listen to the difference in vocabulary between the two of us. Most of mine are four-letter fucking fuckers, and yours are, you know, supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Well, I'm a writer too, like by default. Even even before I was a musician, I was a writer, and as a musician, it just became a different type of writing. So, like, I'm fascinated by articulation. So, I read a lot, and it's just one of those things. Like through osmosis, it just ends up in your languaging patterns, and I, I don't know. There's nothing I feel like I can do about it. <laughs> That's okay. I'm cool with that. It's just uh, I'll be different. the I'll be the the douchey brainiac. Even and I'll though be I'm, the I'm not I'll smart just, at all. I'll just, I'll just be the douche. Exactly. Skidoo. That's what you got to do. Exactly. All right, guys, cool. Well, um, I think we're out of topics, so let's let's end it here. Um, thank you, everybody, for, for watching and hanging out, and uh, we'll catch you guys in the next Overdose. Overdose 16, motherfuckers. Love you. Right. Peace in Bavaria. <laughs>